So good afternoon and salam alaikum to everybody. My name is Dr. Jolly Sahani and I'm the director of Jubilation Office. And it gives me immense pleasure and a great honor to extend a very warm welcome to our distinguished guests, PSU leaders, faculty members, and my lovely students. I would also like to welcome people who have joined us on YouTube Live. So welcome to everybody. I thank you all for taking out time of your schedule to join us, and we would try to make this event as enjoyable and informative as possible. So welcome to the International Happiness Day event 2021. This event is organized by Jubilation Office, and you can see the proud members of Jubilation Office. We have ambassadors. I have uh, Mr. Ahmed Al Gamdi and Ms. Sara Sharif as my admin administrators, and Dr. Najib Khan and Ms. Noura Krimli as uh, the academic ambassadors. I also am proud to have Ms. Michelle Al Rashid in my office. So these are my proud Jubilation ambassadors. Now, before we get started, I would just like to pay my gratitude to the higher management, especially the president and vice presidents for the tremendous support they have provided to the Jubilation Office activities and initiatives. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation for the splendid cooperation of each and every person involved in organizing this beautiful event, especially the PRMC team members. I owe you a lot. In addition, I would like to pay special thanks and my deep appreciation to Ms. Michelle Al Rashid, who has been working with me for this event tirelessly. She has been coordinating everything for me. So, Ms. Michelle, thank you so much for being there. Now, as most of you know, this day, rather yesterday, 20th March, is celebrated as the International Day of Happiness. And in 2012, the United Nations declared it to be observed as the uh, Happiness Day. It is also intertwined in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and it aims to spread positivity and happiness and kindness all around us. So today, we have in store for you a blend of various activities that would help us understand the true and deep meaning of happiness and emotional well-being, not only uh, the superficial, but the deep meaning. Well, you all would agree that happiness is a difficult concept to define, right? For some, it is an emotion of joy. For many, it is contentment. And for most, it is life satisfaction. So I'm going to show you a small video for PSU members, but we'll just wait for one minute for the azan. Hello and salaamu alaikum. Welcome to Prince Sultan University. So on the occasion of International Day of Happiness, we thought of asking PSU employees what is happiness for them. Happiness is something from your inside. It's basically about your satisfaction with what you have or what you have achieved, regardless how great these achievements are. Uh, also, you can find happiness from outside, from uh, helping people or caring about uh, people. يكمل الشعور الدائم بالسعادة في التصالح مع الحياة وقيمة السعادة الحقيقية هي الأهل والأصدقاء. ما بوهاي. Happiness is being content. I'm feeling happy when I'm in nature. Oh, happiness. For me, happiness is a very, very simple idea, okay? I don't need very big things and expensive things to be happy. You know what I uh, am happy about every day? The right textured, aromatic tea of cup with the right ingredients balance is my happiness. Oh, it makes my whole day. Happiness for me is being at peace both spiritually and mentally and knowing that uh, 
my loved ones are well and cared for. And most importantly, uh, right now as an educator, knowing that my students uh, are fulfilling their learning and that I'm able to facilitate and support them in their learning. Happiness is everything to me. Happiness is removing masks. Happiness is coming over here and doing this. Happiness is everything. Good day. For International Happiness Day, I've been asked to briefly talk about what makes me personally happy. What truly makes me happy is taking food like this and turning it into something that's gourmet quality that everybody loves to eat. After all, people operate on their stomachs. Happiness for me is showing appreciation. We have to appreciate one another because this is very important for a human being. We need all the time appreciation. When you speak positive, positive vibes comes to you. At PSU, Prince Sultan University, we are very, very blessed to have a workplace which is like a family. And the jubilation office takes care of our happiness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As saada. As saada tu nawaan. Saada tu dunya wa saada tu akhira. Amma saada tu dunya tajakmilu maai. Andama akunu ana wa ahli wa ahbari wa aqaribi wa jumala ibn saha wa abiyya. Andama asa ila taqarribi ila Allah. Andama aqra'u aya min ayat al-Qur'an wa takunu tahutu ala amali wa akunu a'amalu. Happiness for me is spending time with my friends and family, preparing a wonderful meal, and enjoying it and allowing them to enjoy it with me. Happiness is to be with my family and friends, as well as to be successful. Happiness is a short moment that we enjoy living in. Happiness for me is doing my morning exercises, hearing the noise of birds, and seeing the city waking up. To me, happiness is appreciation, gratitude, and thankfulness. I'm happy because I'm thankful to, first of all, my Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created me and showered upon me his countless blessings. I'm happy because I'm thankful to my parents, my siblings, my wife, my kids, my friends, my colleagues, my teachers, and my wonderful students. You make me happy. Thank you so much. Happiness for me, family, kids, university, and research. So for me, Happiness is my inner joy, peace, and comfort. I do find this happiness in small things like taking a walk in the garden, looking at the flowers. So I truly believe happiness is our choice. It's the story which we tell ourselves every single day. Happy International Day of Happiness. Masaya ako pag ako ay nasa kalikasan. Happy International Day of Happiness. Happy International Day of Happiness. Happy International Happiness Day to all of you. Happy International Day of Happiness. Happy International Day of Happiness. Happy International Day of Happiness to everyone. Happy International Day of Happiness. 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 So I wish everybody a very, very happy International Day of Happiness. Okay, so I'm sure this made you smile a little bit. Every time I watch this video, I smile. I look at the beautiful faces. So thank you so much, everybody, for participating in the video. Those who could not participate, they have sent their best wishes. Thank you very much, everyone of you in PSU. 
of course. Now we are fortunate to have uh, Dr. Heba Koshem with us. She is our Vice President, and I would like to request her with great honor to please uh, give the opening address and welcome the audience for today's occasion. Thank you so much, Dr. Heba. Over to you, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Jody. Uh, can you see me? Can you hear me clearly? Yes, Doctor. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Distinguished speakers, respected colleagues and students, Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to you all. It's with great pleasure that we welcome you all at this exciting webinar. Today, we are celebrating the International Day of Happiness. As you all know, since 2013, the United Nations assigned one day per year for happiness. This, as with all other designated days, is to show the importance of being happy and the importance of happiness in our lives. I believe it's fair to say that all human beings pursue happiness, but each one of us pursue it in a different way simply because each one of us defines happiness differently. So what is happiness? It's a feeling or an emotion that everyone seeks and in fact believes that they deserve. The Jubilation Office, which is the unit organizing this event, of course, was established at Prince, at Prince Sultan University last year. This actually was a timely action. This is the year that has marked our history for generations to come. Of course, I'm talking here about the COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic affected our lives in all aspects. It affected all ages, culture, genders, etc. It influences our priorities in life and our social and professional lives. I think I speak for many of you when I say that now more than ever, we are looking for joy, for jubilation, for comfort, and for peace. Today, we are celebrating the International Day of Happiness, where the conversation is focused on how to find happiness, how to stay positive, and how to help others stay positive. Some might think that such conversations, although of course needed, might be challenging given the circumstances around us. Actually, I believe it's the contrary. One of the words associated with the word pandemic that we frequently repeat these days is the word coping. When we speak of coping, we simply discuss approaches that we can apply to ease the stress that, are, that we are facing due, of course, to the circumstances of the pandemic. Simply put, we discuss approaches to make us happy. Well, I believe we have a few uh, speeches and a panel discussion from distinguished speakers and some uh, distinguished faculty members at PSU where we can discuss this even more. So I will end my opening remarks today with uh, a quote from Albert uh, Einstein, and I quote, if you want to live a happy life, tie it to a goal, not to people or things, end of quote. So yes, we are tying our happiness with a goal that is we and all our loved ones will walk away from this pandemic healthy and safe. And now I will leave you to enjoy the rest of the event. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Well, thank you so much for your encouraging words, Dr. Heba. They truly mean a lot to us, and you have really spread the positivity and started it on the right note. And I would also like to thank you for the incredible support you have provided to the Jubilation Office. Thank you so much. And now, just for some housekeeping, before we dig into the event, uh, some instructions. The schedule has been shared with you and you can see it on your screen as well so that you know where we are and how much time is devoted for each session. We will have two very informative presentations today, a panel discussion, which is among uh, the PSU family members. Uh, then we are going to have 10 lucky draws. We are going to announce them twice, one at 1 p.m. and the second uh, draw will be announced towards the end of the uh, program. We will have question and answers round after each presentation, so I would request if you have any questions, please put them in the chat room or the chat box. We will try to take all your questions towards the end of presentation. And of course, please keep yourself mute if you're not talking or presenting. 
Now, to kickstart our session, let me invite our first guest speaker. There could not have been a better person than him to embellish, to enlighten, to enhance, and to enrich the occasion. He is an award-winning coach, an author, a world-renowned speaker, the director of Henley Center for Coaching, and the professor of coaching and behavioral change at Henley Business School. I'm absolutely delighted to present to you Professor Jonathan Passmore. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Jonathan. He will be sharing his experience and wisdom with us. Over to you, Professor Jonathan, and welcome to Prince Sultan University once again. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that introduction. I'm really delighted to join you today to talk about happiness and how we bring that into our lives, how we share that with our friends, family and our wider community in the university uh, and across our countries. Uh, if I could uh, invite colleagues who have got the slides to bring up the slides and I'll tell you a little bit about our journey over the next 30 or 45 minutes that I'm going to uh, take you through. So our starting point is to be thinking a little bit around theory and research. I'm not going to go into too much detail given the time and the audience that we have. Uh, and then I'm going to focus particularly on about how we bring what we understand about that theory and research into our own lives, into practice. So we're going to be having a look at some examples of that and some takeaway activities that you can be implementing starting tomorrow and applying for the rest of your week. So if you could uh, move to the next slide, please. So our overall agenda then, uh, we're gonna start by looking at definition. Whenever you are an academic, whenever you are a student and you've got an essay to discuss, a great starting point is always to clarify our terms. What do we mean by this particular construct, this concept? So we'll have a look at definitions of happiness. Then we're gonna move on to having a look at an international view. Let's look across the globe and think about what sort of countries uh, are rating themselves as being truly happy? What sort of countries are considered themselves or their population to be less happy? What might that tell us about the nature of happiness? Then we'll have a look at some of the research with secrets of happiness uh, and start to then think about how we can start to apply that in our own lives. And we'll close with six challenges for you to take away to apply to your week. So something practical that you can take away from a, an event such as this. Because of course, one of the challenges that we all face is we turn up to events such as this and the speakers might be very entertaining, they might be very interesting, they might be thought provoking, but we go away unchanged. So I'm gonna be inviting you to make a change, to do something different in your life that might provoke and stimulate your own journey towards happiness and spreading happiness throughout your friends and throughout your campus in the coming week. The other thing that's on the slide are a couple of books that I published uh, earlier in this year, if you're interested in checking out some of this content, but I'll also come to a number of references and other sources of information later on in the presentation. And of course, uh, do connect to me on LinkedIn uh, and We've also got the chat box open and we'll come towards questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have thoughts or disagree with me or have your own ideas, add those into the chat box and we can pick those up later during our conversation over the next 45 minutes or so. Next slide, please. So let's start by examining this construct, this concept of happiness. What does this term mean? Well, I'm sure most people, as we've heard from the video, bring their own definitions to this. If you're really interested in exploring academic definitions, there's a fantastic journal, uh, which is edited by a fellow author of mine, myself, uh, and uh, this colleague uh, edited a book called the Wiley Blackwell uh, Handbook of Positive Psychology. And she is, uh, Dr. Del Feather, is now the editor of the uh, Journal of Happiness Studies. So it's worth checking out there if you're interested in exploring the academic focus. And here are two definitions drawn from that wide academic literature that helps us have 
little bit of an understanding about this construct. And I'm using that word because psychologically, these are not physical objects, but these are things which we are trying to abstract, get an understanding of because they don't exist in the material world. We need to provide some definitions for what do we mean by this term? So there's commonality and a shared understanding. There are boundaries to what's inside and what's outside what we're talking about. So happiness, the current experience as a feeling, as emotion, pleasure or joy, or of a more general sense of emotional condition as a whole. So we're picking up that aspect here about emotion, feeling, sensation, and particularly relating that to experiences, sensations or emotions uh, of pleasure and or of joy. And when we look at the work of people like Paul Ekman, he talks about a wide range of emotions, but particularly about six aspects of our emotional life. And at one end of the spectrum, we may have anger and disgust. At the other end of the emotional spectrum, that we might have surprise and joy. Not that these aspects should be categorised as senses of being good emotions or bad emotions, because actually all of those emotions are serving us well in different situations. There is a time for righteous anger. There is a time that our body, as a response to maybe something that we might be experiencing, rotten food, that we are disgusted at that rotten food uh, that might be sitting on the side and we'd forgotten about it. We don't want to eat that. It's our body pushing us ourselves away from that. And we're all equally being attracted to those situations where we might be surprised. Surprise can be sometimes a negative situation or someone standing behind the door. We weren't expecting that. Or on the other side, we might be anticipating a birthday gift uh, and we open it with surprise. And then we experience as we come to terms with its content, that sense of joy or happiness with the content that that person has thought of us and has then given us this beautiful gift. The second definition, the experience of joy is that word again, contentment or positive well-being. That's a broader concept being introduced here, combined with a sense of one's life is good, meaningful and worthwhile. So this is beginning to take this in a different direction. So you can see a contrast to that first definition. We've got the aspects of well-being introduced. So there's a sense of purpose. We're doing something for a reason and we're doing something that is not just an experience in the moment, but is something that is lasting value, worthwhile. So an interesting contrast between the two. Let's build upon that with the next slide, please. So aspects of happiness that we're seeing emerge in these definitions have led to really two types of happiness being identified and we can trace this back to the Greek philosophers who have written extensively uh, about the nature of what it is to be human and how our humanity unfolds in various ways. So we have hedonic happiness and we often probably if people are caught in the street and ask well what makes you happy we might refer to these external sources. We might have won a prize. We might have pleasure when we're opening a particular gift and there are some sweets uh, inside of those. Um, colleagues who were speaking a moment ago were talking about food and tea and the pleasures that we get from those physical sensations in the world. Those momentary sensations, the meal might last us a few minutes, the sip of tea might last us a few seconds. The joy that we get from the present or those sweets might last us uh, an hour, but they are passing sensations. They give us pleasure in the moment and they're based on external physical sensations that we're getting maybe from the sugar that we are taking into our mouths from that sweet uh, or the taste of the food and the sensations it releases into our mouths. So that hedonic happiness is one aspect of happiness that we're discussing and that relates to those earlier definitions, particularly the former. And the second is eudaimonic happiness. And this particular aspect derives from internal sources. 
its focus is about the meaning and purpose that we have in our lives. That may be about our charitable giving. We might be visiting a children's home uh, and supporting them. It might be we've made a donation that enables uh, other parts of the world uh, and children there to be fed who might be suffering as a result of the pandemic that we're experiencing across the world at the moment. It may be in terms of our worship uh, of God. It may be about our purpose and meaning in terms of fulfilling the job that we're doing in educating, in teaching, in sharing our knowledge with others. Meaning and purpose can be just as rewarding, and one might argue certainly longer lasting than that hedonic happiness. But both dimensions add towards what might be considered to be this construct of happiness. Different people focus on different aspects of that. So let's move to a short poll. When you think about your own happiness, what would be the primary one that gives you happiness today? So if I now ask my colleague to share that poll and we'll just invite you to uh, take a little bit of a vote and we'll see whether what the responses are. Hopefully the poll's been set up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, the poll is in the, uh, the link of the poll is in the comments in the Fantastic. chat box. Lovely. OK, so if colleagues can go to the uh, quick survey and do the survey monkey, then I don't know whether our technical person is going to be able to then share the results in a moment or two. We'll just let you click through. It's only one question, so it should just take you five seconds if you want to click through to that. And the survey monkey poll will then give us some results, hopefully in a moment or two. So while we do that, we'll just spend a moment thinking about our own states, answering that question, and then we'll get the results. So let's just go over to our colleague now. Have we got the results? Are you able to share those with us on the screen or maybe just read them out for us? OK, we'll give you maybe 20 more seconds and then she can show the results. OK, that's lovely. So we'll wait for that to happen. Let me tell you a little bit about my experiences around happiness. Oh, it seems as though we're going to get the results now. So, of course, I've had uh, breakfast this morning and I had uh, an egg for my breakfast. And that was a, a lovely poached egg, gave me a, uh, a nice uh, with some bread. Uh, a lovely taste sensation, so some hedonic uh, pleasure this morning. But I've also prayed this morning. And uh, thinking about my day, that this would go well, that you would be blessed as a result of coming together on your day and thinking about my meaning and purpose. How can I be sharing with you uh, my knowledge uh, in a way that would help you to uh, understand yourself and also bring happiness into your life and to your family's life. So here we go. What's the balance that we've got from the results? That's fantastic. Uh, thank you, colleagues, for sharing that. So we've got a, a oh, now I predicted earlier that we might have something like an 80-20 split and we've got a 70-30 split approximately there uh, with meaning and purpose being highly significant and hedonic happiness um, important but not as significant as meaning and purpose. Now I might suggest that uh, a faith might increase the level of eudaimonic happiness, uh, gives us a sense of meaning and purpose for those of us who have that faith. Uh, and equally on the other side, in countries maybe that have less of that, meaning and purpose can still be present, but you might expect maybe uh, a more balance between the two. I don't have research data to support that. That's just a hypothesis that we might potentially research and find that out. Is there a difference between countries such as North Korea, where there, uh, there is no uh, particular faith that individuals follow, and in fact that's banned, and countries maybe that have got a, a strong faith tradition. Uh, so if we go back to the main slide deck, that will be lovely. 
and we will move forward to our country comparison slide if we could thank you very much so I've just put a hypothesis there to you let's look about who is happy now so here's the data this is the latest data um, looking at countries across the world 150 plus participate in this uh, once again top of the list uh, we can see Finland followed closely by Denmark Switzerland Iceland and Norway and then if we look down further down the list we have got the UK the US uh, UAE uh, KSA listed and then if we go further down the list quite a long way down the list uh, we can see countries such as not surprisingly Afghanistan but we also see countries like uh, uh, Congo and Iraq uh, Madagascar quite lowly listed well what are some of the conclusions that we might draw from that comparison of maybe the top 30 versus the bottom 30? Well, what stands out to me as I look at this data set uh, is uh, there's a comparison in terms of that top 30 in terms of and the bottom 30 in terms of wealth. So finances does seem to make a difference. But there are some certainly disparities there. So probably uh, the United States might consider itself certainly uh, as a overall country to be significantly more wealthy than the Nether Netherlands, for example, or New Zealand. Um, yet these countries are higher up on the league table. So it's not purely a relationship to wealth. And in fact, when we look at the data at individual happiness, what seems to occur is that wealth does matter. But once we get to a certain level of income, and that's a relatively low level, talking about 30,000 US dollars. The impact here that further wealth has significantly starts to decline. So people will not have a certain amount of income to be able to feed their children, have health care and be able to provide a home for them. But after those basic needs have been met, whether you have a Ford or whether you have a Bentley, doesn't really make a significant difference in relation to your feelings about happiness. Whether you're able to have three meals a day or whether you're able to have six meals a day doesn't really make a difference in terms of happiness. Uh, whether you're able to have a house which has got a bedroom for each child or whether you've got five spare bedrooms doesn't seem to make uh, a difference in terms of people's happiness. Well, what is is there? And I haven't moved on yet. Um, what else is there that's worth uh, us exploring? Not only aspects around wealth. Um, another element that seems to be uh, a significant factor as a, a relationship is about freedoms. So Finland, Denmark, Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, uh, quite liberal countries seems to be a factor that's there. Uh, countries where there is a democratic component seems to be uh, a factor. Uh, other aspects that seems to be there, although there are some interesting contrasts is around healthcare provision, educational provision, educational outcomes also seems to be making a difference. Safety and security seem to make a difference. So not surprisingly, if you don't feel safe, that impacts on your happiness. If you don't have an opportunity for your voice to be heard in processes, you're an oppressed people. Um, let's just say in Congo or in Afghanistan, where there is war and disputes and uh, there are disagreements and the risks of losing your life, then these factors uh, seem to be having an effect on those sorts of uh, populations and community, unsurprisingly. And I guess one question when I look at this league table and the differences between all those countries who are scoring sixes and sevens and the countries who are scoring two and three is what falls on my heart is what can we do as a world to bring happiness? Not that I want to move the UK up from number 13 to into the top 10. Does it really matter if the UK moves from 7.17 to maybe 7.25? No, it probably doesn't make very much difference. But what would make a difference is if we could make a difference to people in Afghanistan or the Democratic People's uh, Republic of Congo or in Chad or many of these other countries who are experiencing lower levels of happiness. And we could introduce a change in these countries to improve educational outcomes, security, providing safer spaces for individuals, um, improving the amount of money so that people are able to feed their families uh, and feel safe and happy and live a fulfilled and meaningful life. That's the difference that potentially we as the top 30 countries should be thinking about how we help the bottom 30 countries. 
one suggestion. Let's move on to the next slide. Let's start to move to uh, an individual level now. Now, um, some of us um, suffer with unhappiness too. And that's equally true in terms of Finland, for example, has a very high suicide rate. Yep, number one on the list. So, you know, what happens? How do we explain um, why people are unhappy? Well, I guess if you're pursuing unhappiness, it's worth to think about the opposite of what we're pursuing. Well, how do you go about do that? So Martin Seligman, a professor in the United States, has talked about three factors, the three P's, that could be important factors that help us to be more resilient when things go wrong. And of course, things go wrong in life because life is not purely every day of sunshine, every day of happiness, every day things go perfectly just as we planned. There are ups and downs. But the people who are able to stay happy are the people who are able to be resilient. These are people who are able to be persistent, who are able to overcome those issues. Um, and instead, they avoid this idea of a persistent negativity, a pervasive negativity and a permanent negativity. So let me uh, illustrate this. So just imagine there are four people walking down a street. And this is a street, I should say, and a spring day in England. And spring days in England, as you probably know, are full of rain. So we get lots of muddy puddles. And uh, sometimes the muddy puddles, just a little shallow muddy puddle, and you can walk straight through and nothing happens. Other times you tread into the puddle, you don't quite know how deep it is because it's muddy, you can't see the bottom, and your shoe sinks into it. So our first poor person going for their country walk on a Sunday morning steps into the puddle and says, oh, no, I am so unlucky. Oh, look, my shoes are ruined. Another person comes walking along the street. They have not just that persistent attitude that I've said, but it's also pervasive. They step into the puddle. The mud goes up over the shoe. They say, oh, no, I'm so unlucky. This always happens to me. Seems pervasive, goes into other situations. Oh, I expect when I get back to the car, the car won't start either. Pervasive, going into other situations. Then along comes another family and a third person steps into the puddle. Oh, gosh. Look what's happened. I'm so unlucky. My whole life is just one disaster after another. I'm just totally doomed. That's permanent. So not only is it keeps happening to me, it's always going to keep happening to me. It's permanent. Then another family walks along. Children running ahead. They're skipping through the puddles. There comes along the dad. The dad steps into the puddle. The mud rises up over their boots. And their response, ah, oh, I've got mud on my shoes. Gosh, I'm so lucky I put my boots on today. The choice about how we respond, number one, number two, number three, a persistent view that things are going to go wrong, a pervasive view that this is always going to happen, a permanent view. It happens not only in a variety of different situations, but it's going to carry on into the future will bring us to states of unhappiness. We are not resilient to overcome the ups and downs. The person who is able to overcome that and to reframe the situation, huh, I'm so lucky I put my boots on today, is the one who's able to remain resilient, overcome the downs and to stay in touch. And what a beautiful spring day, whether it's raining or sunny, God is blessing us. I'm here with my children going on a lovely walk amongst nature. Next slide, please. So here are some secrets to happiness. We probably intuitively know many of these. And the research evidence, go to the journal, go and have a look at that book, Wiley Blackwell Handbook of Positive Psychology, hints at many of these ideas and expands upon them from a research and theoretical construct perspective. But here are eight things. Expectations. If we could stop taking things for granted. So the person was lucky that they had their boots. Their thankfulness came from, I'm really pleased 
that I had my boots, that I own a set of boots. If I didn't have any boots, I'd be walking down here with bare feet. How do we experience all of the blessings and show gratitude uh, and appreciation for the what we've been granted through our lives and instead see these as blessings? So from this, that might be when we get up of the morning, the sun is shining. We step into the shower, we have clean, fresh water to clean ourselves. We go downstairs uh, uh, or we step into the uh, kitchen and there we have a variety of different foods to eat. Uh, our children have clothes to put on. Uh, we have a car sitting out in our driveway. We have a chance to take them to the hospital or to the uh, school or to the playground because all of those are available for them. If we need healthcare, if we if it's time for education, if it's a day for play, all of those provide us with opportunities. But so rarely do we recognize that blessing that we have. So readjust our expectations and recognize the many blessings that we have. Number two on my list, a growth mindset and seeing everything as a learning opportunity. We might go out without a coat because it's a sunny English summer's day here on a Sunday in the UK. But we might get out and we've walked for 10 minutes and the clouds come over and it starts to rain. Well, we could get frustrated, annoyed, sad because we've got caught in the rain. We could manage our expectations and say, do you know what? That's just fine. It's wow, how beautiful this is. The plants are going to need this and nourishment. And that's why we're so lucky in the UK. It's beautiful and green. We're very blessed in that way. Uh, and we could say, well, there's a learning opportunity here. Next time, uh, I know that it's March. It could rain even though it looks sunny. In 10 minutes, it could be raining. I'll make sure to take a coat next time. Everything is a learning opportunity. If we have a growth mindset, it's not the negative things happen. They're just opportunities for us to reflect, opportunities for us to learn. Number three on my list is experiments to try something new and have an open mind about that experiment. Uh, it was my daughter's birthday last weekend and my other daughter uh, uh, made a cake for her and she was uh, very disappointed about how the cake was initially going. She, I've never made this before. She had looked at the recipe. She's doing it all herself. She's 10 and she had uh, prepared this uh, and then she had got it out of the oven, wasn't sure that it was going to work and then did some further adjustments to it and some icing and added some additional ingredients. And the outcome was amazing. She had tried something new. She was uncertain. She kept going with the experiment and it turned out wonderfully. But as I said at that moment when she was unsure, it's not about what you're doing for your sister in terms of baking this cake and how beautifully it tastes. What you're doing is you're showing your love and care for your sister and for all of us as a family. You're learning, you're trying something new. And the next time you make it, you will have learned some extra tips, some little ways of doing that that make it quicker, easier, and will lead to a better outcome. And there's learning in doing this. And of course, what actually happened was the cake turned out beautifully. We all enjoyed the cake. Uh, and it was a wonderful gift of love from one sister to another. Serve others, number four. Let's try and look out for those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Coming back to that element, the eudonomic aspects within happiness about meaning and purpose. How do we think about, how do we serve? How do we recognize through things that we can do for others, those who are less fortunate than ourselves? And as we give through those altruistic acts, the research evidence says that, that altruistic act often leads to happiness for ourselves as well as blessings for others, as we share what we have with those who are less fortunate. We show respect with our thank yous, with our kindness towards people, but we can also show blessings for them in many different ways, through sharing our wealth, through sharing our love, through sharing the many things that we have. Number five on my list is about fostering relationships, spending times with those that we love. That may be our children, it may be our wives, our husbands, our nieces, our nephews, our parents, but it can also be others who are in our community. How do we foster those relationships, invest in those? 
I often joke when I'm coaching senior executives about the challenge of work-life balance and leading big organizations is a serious challenge. It demands lots and lots from people, lots of energy and lots of time to enable organizations to succeed. But the question that I ask them is, you know, it's very interesting when you talk to people in the last few years of their life, or you listen to somebody uh, who might be on their deathbed, very rarely do you hear people say, oh gosh, I wish I had spent more time doing email. Instead, what you hear people say is a desire that they had spent more time with their friends and their family. Let's take that opportunity to foster those relationships and spend more time with those who are dear and important to us. Number six on my list is exercise. What we know is our body, when our heart rate rises, floods our body with chemicals and that chemical endorphin release can raise our emotional state, um, bring us towards a sense of happiness. So not simply going for a 10 minute run, but probably 30 minutes of physical activity. And it may take us a number of days or weeks or months to build up to that particular point where we get that release of endorphins that gives you a high. And you speak to many elite athletes, many people who are regularly exercising physically, 30 minutes plus a day, uh, what's been their experience? And they become almost addicted to that pleasure, the joy that the endorphin reliefs gives them. It gives them a sense that replaces the pursuit of the caffeine in the cup of coffee uh, or some of the other sensations that they might be seeking during the course of a day. In fact, that physical release not only is good for our physical well-being, but as you can see, it's going to be good for our mental well-being. Number seven on my list, goals. Some great work by writers Locke and Latham have helped us to understand the fundamental nature of goals, things that we are pursuing in our life, a future purpose or direction. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? Now, those goals might be, I want to pass an exam, so I'm working in a steady, goal-directed way towards achieving that outcome. It could be that I'm seeking to move from being an assistant professor to achieving my professorship. And to do that, I need to publish this number of academic papers. I need to speak at this number of conferences. I need to be doing these number of type of committee roles or other functions that build up my CV, demonstrate my contribution towards knowledge. And through achievement of those sub goals, I achieve the ultimate goal, professorship passing of the exam. So thinking about what are the goals that I'm working towards? They may be aspects connected to our career, but they can also be about how we're living our lives and about how we are serving you know, through the various roles that we have in our leadership positions as a student, how we're serving others to create that meaning and purpose for us in the life that we live here. Number eight is about that purpose. And it's links to goals, but is asked that fundamental question and back to that nature of happiness that we were talking about at the very start. And really a question about why am I here? Am I here simply to drink tea, eat tuna, um, spend time with my friends at a, uh, an evening meal? All of those are pleasurable for us, but we also have alongside of those, I would suggest a deeper purpose. That our life has meaning. Understanding what that purpose and meaning is can be liberating for individuals and through living our lives for that purpose will bring us joy and we share in that joy with others. Next slide, please. So I said as I was coming towards the end of my presentation, I would give you an invitation for six tasks, six challenges for the coming week. Why six? Well, we live in a week of seven days. We might think a challenge a day. And then on our seventh day, we might want to rest before we repeat that cycle. So here are my six challenges. It's an opportunity for you to participate. As I said at the very start, this may be something that you can do in one way or another, or you can come to this talk, simply go through the motion and take nothing away. Here is my invitation to take something away. 
day one, an opportunity for you to uh, compassion. How can you rise to a compassion challenge? Finding somebody who's more in need of you and buying them lunch. It might be you're a professor and you have come down and there's a student who's in the queue. You don't know them. They're not in your class. So let me get you lunch. Maybe you've gone to a local cafe and uh, there's an opportunity for you to buy lunch for the person who's behind you. Just give them a blessing. Maybe they are immensely wealthy. Maybe they are poor. But just that opportunity of surprising them with a lunch. Oh, wow. Thank you. What a blessing. It may be that you think, oh, there is a charitable organisation that I support. I'm just going to log on today to their website and I'm going to send them 10 US dollars to buy lunch for somebody who's in Afghanistan or the Democratic Peoples of Congo or in Chad, whose family may not have the food. And through that donation to the UN or one of these other uh, charities to be able to provide a lunch for that individual. And probably for the cost of a lunch uh, in Riyadh or in London, uh, we can probably buy food for that family <laughs> for the whole day, maybe even for the whole week with our 10 US dollars. Number two, next day of the week, if you're sitting on a bus or you're sitting in traffic and you're just queuing up, maybe you're listening to the radio, just turn the radio down for a moment. Just look around you. And the people who are sitting next to you on the bus or the train, sitting next to you in the traffic queue or behind and in front of you, and just bless each person. Look at them, think about their personal circumstances. We don't know them. Maybe they've just had a row with their wife. Maybe they've just had some disagreement with their children. Maybe they're worried about their mum who's ill. Maybe they're worried about their family back home. To send a blessing to each one of them uh, and inviting them just in our minds to have a great day. Number three, a relationship challenge. To write a letter to a family member and tell them how much they mean to you and why. So we don't often write letters these days. Maybe we don't even say to our family members how much they mean to us. We might give them a passing remark, oh, yeah, I love you, as we give them a kiss or a hug, goodbye, or when we greet them. But spending 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just putting down in a letter with a pen onto a piece of paper, remember those things? To write a real letter, and to say to that person how much they mean to us. And including in that, an incident or an example about why we feel the way that we do. Something that they've done, how they've looked after us, uh, how they care for us. Put that in that letter and deliver it to them, post it to them, get somebody else to deliver it to them, but bring some joy into their world. And as we do, we bring to mind the memories of our relationship with them and of those times when we have been blessed by them. Number four, raising your heart rate. So a physical challenge. Raising your heart rate, if it's safe to do so, so taking into account any advice from your doctor uh, and going for a run, going for a walk, going for a swim, whatever suits you, wherever you might be in the environment and the opportunities that you have on that particular day. But raising your heart rate and seeking to do that for 30 minutes that might be a bit of a stretch, but pushing yourself to your limit and then thinking about how you might build on that, keeping going so your heart rate goes up safely and you are bringing this into your regular daily routine. Next one, set a goal for the next week, for the next month and for the year ahead. When you come to spring of next year, here we are in March, where would you like to be? Maybe it's exams that you've passed. Maybe it's friendships that you've built upon. Maybe it's serving others. Maybe it's about your own career. So what would you want to have achieved 12 months from now? To achieve that, what would you need to have achieved by six months? And over those six months, what are the things you might need to do each month or each week that move you towards that goal? And that goal adds towards your meaning and purpose, who you are, who you want to become. Number six on my list, the blessing challenge. Take an opportunity when you work, wake up on day six to count your blessings and count them one by one and to be thankful. 
And you wake up in your bed, be thankful of the sheets that surround you, of the comfort that you are there, of maybe who you're waking up in your household with, maybe about the temperature of the floor, about the water that's available for your shower, for the food that's available in your cupboards, for the education, for the healthcare, for the roads, for all of those people who are serving you in the variety of different ways, who might be sweeping the road, who look after the plants, who may look after your garden, who might be able to be there for you in a variety of different ways as teachers, as workers for the government, uh, as colleagues uh, at work who might be doing the photocopying uh, or providing the technical support. So blessings throughout the day, recognizing each of those and appreciating in our heart the blessings that we have and how we are so lucky to have so many blessings with jobs and healthcare and education and a home and food and so on. And on the last day, on the seventh day, to take some rest before we start that process again. Now, moving on to the next slide. I wanted to uh, share a little moment with you about a secret to happiness and then I'm going to share with you to close a video clip which is around about two minutes. So there's a Chinese saying that says if you want happiness for an hour, oh, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help someone. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next slide, please. And invite you to watch this short video clip. It's about two minutes. Oh. I need some sound. There's only a little bit of music, so there's nothing significant and the words will come up if you're unsure. And there we go. You can move on to the next slide, please. 
So what do you desire most in your heart? Or will bring you and those around you happiness? So if you'd like to connect to me, Jonathan Parcel on LinkedIn, it'd be lovely to hear from you, uh, hear about your experiences. If you're interested in what we do at Henley Business School, we've got a number of reports on our website, or you can join the Henley Centre for Coaching. And if you like loads of free stuff because you're a student, then that's good too. You can visit my personal website, jonathanpassport.com, and there's around about 100 research papers, book chapters, and other content for you to download. So having said that, I'm really happy for us to move across into questions and discussion. There's the chat box. Please do add comments and questions there. Thank you. All right. So what a great, lovely and insightful session, Professor. Uh, truly, I'm going to take five takeaways from your session personally. Uh, but for now, without uh, giving my comments, I will leave the floor for the questions. I believe Mr. Rave raised the hand. Yes, Mr. Rave. Can you uh, either put it in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and start asking? Can you hear me, Mr. Rave? Okay, I think... Uh, He's not with us, or maybe there is some technical issue. Any other questions? Yes, please, Dr. Charlie. Go ahead, Dr. Charlie. Yes, uh, thank you, Professor uh, Janathan. It was wonderful. You know, you gave us a lot of tips. We value all that. However, I have a basic uh, confusion. Say you were talking about hedonic and eudaimonic, uh, say, uh, happiness. And uh, in the survey, we got a result. I also participated in the survey, and I also uh, say voted for eudaimonic. However, I have a confusion. Aren't we really Hippocratic while we are saying this? Because I'm afraid the, the, the resources and the time that we spend, most of the resources and time that we spend is more on, uh, say, uh, hedonic pleasures or hedonic happiness and only less is spent particularly our time our resources you know only very less is spent on eudaimonic ones however when we talk about because of an idealistic concept we always say oh we go for eudaimonic that is that is something great uh, how do you react to that you may, you may please switch on the mic you are muted uh, thank you Doctor, uh, and I think you've provided a very challenging uh, perspective in relation to uh, participants' responses there. And I think the, there is some truth in what you say. So it, it is true that many of us as humans uh, get confused and that we spend too much of our chi time believing that hedonic happiness is where we should be focusing our effort. And our a developed world society has certainly encouraged that. If only I had more salary, if only I could get the latest iPhone 12, if only I could, and that those aspects contribute and mean happiness. And of course, uh, all of us remember um, the American, the United States Constitution about the uh, purpose, uh, one aspect of the Constitution is the, the pursuit of happiness. Um, and the implication then that this focus on capitalist values and acquisition of more and more items leads us to happiness, we know is a very shallow road. And that actually the research evidence says the more time that we can invest, and my focus in this presentation is towards those aspects around meaning and purpose. So encouraging ourselves, we know this is true, which is why we get the results that we do, but we sometimes uh, neglect that in our behaviours. So refocusing, recalibrating our focus towards meaning and purpose means that we can spend more time with family and friends. No one ever uh, talks about spending more time on email as I gave you that uh, story, but of course people value friends. No one, once you've bought the dress or the new suit or the lovely tie or whatever it might be, the new iPhone 12, next year it's out of date. But those relationships that we've invested in with family and friends, how we have spent our money or maybe sharing that with others will bring us a deep sense of joy that is lasting. 
because it's about who we are. We've cultivated in ourselves a way of being that I would suggest is truer to our fundamental nature of what it is to be human. And that we are sometimes deceived by that pursuit of the short term, latest iPhone, new car, lovely meal. Not that they're not pleasurable, but if we only pursue the shallow, then we never indulge and go into the deep. And it's the deep waters where we as humanity can flourish. I agree 100%. This is why I said this event is not for that superficial laugh or superficial happiness. We're going to dig deep. And probably the next session with the panel discussion, we are going to uh, share some stories of PSU members. But I believe, Dr. George, you got the answer. Yes, uh, Dr. This is just an addition to a, a contribution that I would like to make. Probably, you know, sure. if I can relate it with Abraham Maslow's need hierarchy. I would try to argue that, say, hedonic pleasures are critically important, so very basic, upon which, you know, over and above that, when you have eudaimonic pleasures, you know, you would be, you would be really happy. So some, some essential part has to be there, which has to come from hedonic, say, just like physiological needs, you know, it is after physiological needs that you can go to safety and security, you can go to social, you can go to psychological, and you can go to, say, self-actualization need. When we talk about eudaimonic, that is more about self-actualization need, whereas when we talk about, you know, hedonic, that is probably more about physiological needs and the nature, uh, and of that nature. So without satisfying to at least to a certain extent the, the, the hedonic pleasure we may not be able to satisfy the eudaimonic ones. That is probably the reason why the poor countries are very poor, uh, are uh, you know uh, lower on the on the ranking of countries that you have shown, and the and the rich countries are mostly on the on the higher ranking. With this Good. contribution, I'm stopping, Mike. <laughs> Thank you very much for the for those thoughts. And as I mentioned, uh, with the example of wealth that there is a certain cutoff without wealth, without some wealth, then we can't have those basic needs met. And I think that is your argument. And I would, would share that view. The evidence supports that perspective. Uh, and I would also say that um, it's taking a cross-cultural perspective. When we particularly look at indigenous peoples, for example, there's been a, a literature which has been highly critical of some of the uh, earlier positive psychology models. So, for example, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and their very individualistic focus and that individualistic focus might be more connected with hedonic happiness about my personal experiences. And when we look at indigenous peoples, they, the evidence seems to be that there is a more an appreciation of the group and, and a wider appreciation of the system in which the group exists. And so if you then start to think about what those aspects are, then we recognize, yes, it might be fantastic for me to have a new iPhone or whatever it might be. But in doing so, if the long term impact of that is I ruin the planet, then actually, yes, I get a great buzz where I've got the phone, but my children have got no place to be because world temperatures have risen so much that we've created a, a desert across the planet. So there's a balancing act between the two. And I think that was broadly your argument and I, I would would share that all right thank you so much i truly believe both are important again i'm putting in a chat room it depends on individual to individual depending on what needs are active at that moment right so with that and any other questions from the audience we'll just take one more any other question any other comment so one okay. colleague has put into one colleague has put into chat the challenges of existing in COVID times, and I think many of us have been in lockdown. We are in the UK at the moment, so there are restrictions. Restaurants are closed, shops are closed, and what we have found. So I, uh, I just share very briefly my story. I were in March this time last year. I was seriously ill with COVID. And my wife was fearful I was going to die, uh, and fortunately, uh, I have recovered. I'm back to back to normal. But during that particular time, 
apart from praying, uh, I committed myself, if I live, I'm going to write 10 books over the coming year. So I set myself a goal uh, and inviting you, what's an outrageous goal that you could set for yourself? And then start thinking, what are the steps that you need to work towards that would help you achieve that goal? What do you need to do each day? And uh, so basically that's a book a month. Gosh, how do you do that? How do you craft the time to go and do this? So in your times, what's relevant for you? Uh, Alina, thinking about how you can do something that's great for you, for your friends, for your family. And we don't need sometimes physical contact. We might be able to use Zoom or Hangout or Teams to connect with people. We might be able to write letters. Uh, we may be able to do other things. It might be about learning. I'm going to create or it might be about fitness. It might be about a range of different things that you commit yourself to. So, yes, we might feel constrained by COVID, but in another way, depending on how you see it, it could be a liberating moment. Just reframe what you're thinking and within the boundaries that you have, how do you set yourself to goals that in three months, six months, 12 months from where you are now, your life has been changed and transformed in a positive way and others have too. Thank you for that question. Uh, and it's been great joining you today. Thank you very much indeed for having me. So on behalf of Tribulation Office and Prince Sultan University, I pay my gratitude and thank you, Professor Jonathan, for taking our time and talking to us on this beautiful occasion of International Happiness Day. And we'll be in touch. Uh, we are indeed grateful for your sessions, the tips, the uh, the six points which you have mentioned for every day in a week and seventh day, just take a rest, give it to yourself, give a break. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Jonathan. Indeed, we are grateful. Thank you. So moving on. Before we move on to our panelist or the panel discussion, I have five lucky draws to be announced. Can I invite uh, Miss Michelle to announce the names? Who are the lucky ones? Lucky five. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so we use the website to, to, uh, that's called random.org uh, to pick randomly by numbers through the list of attendees. Uh, so the first one uh, is Ms. Haya Al Tamimi. The second is uh, Dr. Michelle Worlds. Oh, wow. The, okay. the third, Ms. Alina Salem. Mm -hmm. The fourth, Mr. Mohsen Mustafa. Uh, the fifth is Miss or Mr. Tahima Tahir. I'm not sure exactly. Okay, great. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Yes, many, many congratulations indeed. You will get your gift voucher and a certificate by tomorrow morning. Or probably we'll try to send them today across. So thank you so much, Miss Michelle. Yes, Dr. Michelle, congratulations. And to others also, I think we have a couple of students also in the list. So thank you very much. Moving on. Up next is the panel discussion among our PSU members, our faculties and employees. So as you know, we have discussed many factors which, of course, enhance our happiness and hinder our happiness. So to talk about some important stories, some stories worth sharing, let me invite our first panelist today. Uh, she is Dr. Noor Al Musharraf, a faculty in College of Humanities. Uh, she holds a PhD degree in foreign and second language education from University at Buffalo. Her research interests focus on English as a foreign language, learning pedagogies, inquiry-based teaching, and the list is endless. So she has recently published a paper on mental health and well-being during the COVID-19 pandemic. I think we're going to draw from that paper as well. Uh, welcome, Dr. Noura. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hope all is well. Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Allow me to introduce our next panelist, Dr. George Thomas. He is currently the Chair of Marketing Department at College of Business. And we have been fortunate to have Dr. George with us for the last 20 years or so, right, Dr. George? He has been heading many departments uh, in the university, and he is an active researcher. He has published in high-impact journals, uh, especially in ABDC list. He is also known, uh, very well known in the training field as well. He also serves as the member of board of director from last seven years. Uh, welcome, Dr. George. We are lucky to have you Thank here. Thank you with so us. much. Thank you so much. 
All Thank right. you for inviting so, me. Yeah. You're most welcome. Moving on to the next panelist, the lively Miss Miss Ba. You have seen her in the video as well. Uh, she is the faculty in College of Law, three times winner of Best Law Teacher Award. Uh, by the way, she uses a lot of anecdotes and legal anecdotes in her law lectures. Uh, she won't simply say things like, okay, I give you 12 oranges in 10 reals. She would rather say, I hereby transfer you all the tangible, intangible legal rights of use, enjoyment, and sub-sale of these 12 oranges in a tender of 10 reals. Hmm, very, very interesting. Thank you, Ms. Bisba, and welcome uh, to the event and for the panel discussion. And thank, thank you, you Ms. Bai. It was so great to see you again. Yes, Dr. Chalmers. Same here. <laughs> Same here. All right. So moving on to the next very interesting panelist, Dr. Amal Kinan, the lecturer at HPE department. Dr. Kamal, are you here with us? Dr. Kamal is a clinical dietitian, a specialist in sports and nutrition, broadcaster in TV, and very active on social media, I must say. Uh, she is the chairman in the foundation of Kale Association for Obesity and executive secretary in Saudi Society for Clinical Nutrition also. So we look forward for some tips from you, Dr. Kamal, and welcome sure. uh, to the session. Thank you very much, and happy Mother Day also for today. Yes, yes, I forgot to mention happy International or Women's Day. Oh, sorry, Mother's Day. Mother's we have been celebrating so many good events. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for reminding that Mother's Day. Yes. Last but not the least, let me welcome Mr. Hamid Dashtam. He is working as the managing editor for PSU Research Review Journal, and he is also supporting as the administrator for the Department of Accounting. I hope I have spelled, I've pronounced your last name correctly. If not, please, uh, I apologize uh, for that. Uh, welcome, Mr. Hamid, to the session. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Hamid. Hi, Dr. George. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, great. So I would first turn to Dr. Noura and kickstart the discussion by asking a simple question. You know, we have a lot of techniques of stress management, coping with stress and dealing with difficult times. When, but when actually the time hits, it's so difficult to remember those techniques. It's so difficult to practice those techniques. So how do we actually cope up in difficult times? And, you know, if you can share your uh, your your things which you have uh, actually used in your life and who which came out as as good and uh, practical thank you dr noura Absolutely. So I'll start by telling the truth. Uh, when we heard about the pandemic, it was like, it's the uncertainty. So basically, we paused our, I'm talking about myself, I paused for, let's say, days, seeing that what is it that I can do? How can I move forward? You know, we as human, uh, most of us would like or thrive in routines. So we are more focused into normality and we want to have control to our life. So when the pandemic happened, I was like, okay, what should I, uh, what can I do? And how can I move forward? And the first thing is that I did, I had goals written and I started by accepting the situation. So I would uh, suggest that when you face any challenges in your life, you would start by accepting it as it is. It's not accepting is not giving up, but accepting it is acknowledging the situation, the status, the condition that would allow you to move forward. Also, what helps me too is prioritizing. So basically what is so important, what is least important, and then arranging it. And that's part of um, time management, I would say. Um, one important thing is also unlocking your full potential. So you never know that what is skills you have and until you practice it, until you try it out. So also unlocking your full potential with that uh, would be really helpful. And my secret, let's say, uh, tip is disconnecting and relaxing. So I use breaks a lot. I disconnect using a lot of things, uh, physical activity, and uh, there's no limit to it. And um, 
I, I used to remember my mom saying that well-balanced meal is so important for you. And I couldn't really realize it until the moment I try it. So basically the well-balanced meat would help me and would help my kids, would help, would help us all to energize, would help all our, our brain function well, would help us with uh, a better sleep, and with that all would help us to productivity. And um, I would say that, um, uh, like an advice, I, uh, and I used to say it is fake it until you make it. So I would say, I'm feeling positive, I'm gonna do this, and I train myself, and that would help in creating positivity. Lovely, uh, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome advice. Hopefully we'll be able to implement. Uh, the person who's smiling, Dr. George, you have to add something into it or do you have to share your own story? What are the practical approaches? Maybe we can learn from your stories as well. Yes, uh, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jolie and Dr. Noura. I'm the opposite, you know. I like to connect with people and, and the circumstances around. For, the, for example, for the time being, at the moment, I'm a bit unhappy because my name was not pronounced uh, in the lucky draw. You know? So ah, I'm a bit me unhappy too. about yes. it. Me too. <laughs> Sorry for that, guys. Come on. <laughs> but your hair are heroes. <laughs> and, and and the real reason why I pa decided to participate in this program is not because I have anything substantial to contribute, just because of the reason that this is probably the only one program in which I need to speak only for like two minutes, and that too without <laughs> much stressful preparation. <laughs> that is the simple reason why I decided to participate. And don't worry, we have one more round of lucky draws. Maybe you will. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, let me be hopeful, you know. <laughs> yes. And um, yes. as somebody <laughs> rightly pointed out, you know, this, uh, you know, in the chat I saw uh, Alina or so, you know, uh, yeah. saying that, you know, she was thinking about the meaning of life and all that, you know, during this time. I was truly one like that. You know, I, I really had very difficult time during this COVID pandemic. You know, I booked, uh, traveled uh, four times during the last one year all of which I had to not cancel, you know, the, the airlines canceled it, you know, the, uh, even now they, they have to pay me, you know, that is the case. And my mother was extremely sick during this oh. period. So emotionally I was extremely taken and I even uh, dared to send my wife and daughter, although being alone is very difficult, I sent my wife and daughter to home to take care of my, my mother, you know, that much, maybe because of the, the eudaimonic pleasure that uh, the person was talking about. But, you know, with that, uh, not just the, the hedonic pleasure, but, you know, being alone is extremely difficult. You know, it was emotionally challenging. I was like, you know, I was losing my hope. I lost my emotional control. I started overreacting to situations. I was not behaving properly to people. A lot of problems I have noticed in my behavior. And my solutions were two. You know, fortunately, one solution has from my has come from my colleagues. You know, as soon as people like Dr. Jolie, Dr. Senurin Dehari, Dr. Noor Aziz, and all of them, when, when they caught from one of my email that I'm, I'm in a stressful situation, I'm in an emotional imbalance, they immediately started uh, say, calling me, responding me, Dr. Jolie, I think, you know, she called twice for almost like an hour or more, you know, uh, uh, and uh, others send messages, a couple of others uh, say, uh, Im immediately uh, took messages in WhatsApp and all that, you know, because they understood that George is not, not the same George that he was, you know, so People, people immediately empathized and sympathized with me, which brought me down. You know, I, I felt like, yes, there is somebody to take care of me. You know, there, there is someone uh, or, or to a particular group I belong. And because of this reason, whenever my colleagues in the department, particularly in the marketing department, were in stressful situation, I always bothered to call them. I always bothered to send them some messages and all that to, to comfort them. So this is one good solution that uh, helped me as well as probably I could adopt for helping others as well. And another funny solution that I brought in was, which I think is was really, really useful for me. Uh, I, I just uh, identified, I searched 
among my old friends, you know, because all my new friends, they are very good friends, but, you know, they are all going and working in their offices. So I didn't want to interact with them. I don't even go to a supermarket. I just arrange a person to purchase things for me. I don't even go to a supermarket because I am diabetic. I am I'm at high risk, you know, so I, I completely avoid it. Otherwise, what market is called as retail therapy, we call it retail therapy. That's a good thing, you know, in, in this kinds of circumstances, going and making some purchases and all that will make you happy at least hedonically you will you will be happy but i i couldn't even adopt that what i did is i identified two other friends all friends they were you know recently i didn't have any communication with them but we re reactivated the communication just because of the reason that they were also working like me from home you know without going to the office and we decided to meet every weekend once in every weekend for a dinner and spend like three four hours together right now I have something to look for uh, and expect during the weekend. Otherwise, you know, weekend was like, you know, even the weekends were not giving me any kind of pleasure or happiness. So these were the two solutions that, that I adopted. Thank you very much. If you have questions, we will great. discuss later. That's great. See, uh, how we have selected people is with different background, different stories, different situations, and different ways of dealing with situations. For Dr. George, he's been living alone from uh, for, I think, almost six months now or more. Dr. George. So with that, let's move on to Ms. Bisba. You raised your hand, my dear. Uh, no, actually, I was listening very, very intently to Dr. George. Number one, it was after a long time I was connecting with him through you. Thank you so much. So that's a joyful time for me also. Um, well, my contribution uh, to your discussion or the topic is twofold. Actually, I was raising my finger for crossing it, you know, for, uh -huh. for my, my draw, lucky draw. So uh -huh. that was a cross finger. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, the two parts I want to share after uh, attending, you know, off and on, I was attending Mr. Jonathan's talk also and what Dr. George was saying about that. Uh, uh, you know, the happiness, the criteria for the sustainable development goals and what is the personal happiness are two different things. So it is very important for the panel, you know, for, for our, our uh, audience. I just want to discuss some part of that, that happiness uh, index actually is an international phenomena regarding your relationship with your state, not with your family or with your colleagues around you. It's basically how well the state is looking after your personal individual needs in emergency. So maybe it is something linked with that hydronic or eudonic, the term, I, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce it correctly. So keeping that in view, the World Bank and United Nations have developed certain criteria that why Finland is the happiest country. It's not that the people are enjoying their lives there, not at all. It's that opposite that how well are you being looked after by your state resources when you are unhappy. So that is the criteria which is to be, you know, looked at to measure happiness index for, you know, I just wanted to be more academic so that our some of our students are perhaps online. Some of our other colleagues are there. So happiness index is basically that when a person is suffering, how well the state resources are available quick efficient, effective, how well are they placed at a person's disposal? For example, if I am not uh, like Dr. George was not well, instead of calling his friend, which was his, his tip for managing stressful time, did he ever call an ambulance? Did he ever call for an appointment for the doctor? So how quickly was he able to reach that resource? This is the index of happiness around the world. Plus, again, for the knowledge sake, I would like to add that what is the the uh, you know the the perception of people to come and adopt living in your country how willing are other people coming into your country to adopt what is the crime rate level what is the ease of business level so all of these are the sg uh, sustainable development goal index which is arranged by the world bank and by united nation why am i saying this if maybe i'm getting a bit philosophical is because this topic is very closely related to our human rights law course which we teach because social security is a human right uh, development of personal uh, in initiatives or ambitions is the duty of the government helping you to reach those goals so that is the happiness index which we 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 have to i because i bring this topic happiness index as a human rights index so 
keeping that academic side you know on one side i would now like to come to your question that what is our personal uh, technique since i have uh, most of my life i've lived as a uh, as an individual person in different parts of the world alone so i have a different set of stresses as compared to dr george who has who who seems to be talking a lot about missing his family or not being able to be with his mom so for me living alone is not a stressful situation i am always living alone no husband no children no you know family responsibilities in that sense but then one thing which was always a stressful part was you know adapting to different countries because i being alone and then traveling and living in different parts of the world always uh, brought new challenges so in that scenario of life uh, i would not say lonely but a single uh, person lifestyle i would say that uh, i discovered that i can manage stress to be my own personal best friend to begin with and one tip i got you know from a very young girl she was in an eighth grade and i uh, she was in in some arab country i met and uh, when we were discussing you know i was very depressed and she was just chatting with me and uh, she asked me what do you want to do uh, how can i make you happy and i said i want to do this 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 and she said but in all these things you are mentioning you are always ask you are you need another partner with you and you will never be happy then because you can't find a partner then you can't be happy then is this the solution for you and i really like it struck me yes she's right happiness should come from your within you don't need a, another person to make you happy so um i have discovered like you you know when you called me for the video making i could think of those simple pleasures my cup of tea in the morning the aroma should be the right uh, aroma it will make me happy really instead of i'm sorry instead of you know meeting my family <laughs> because uh i have found my own solutions myself you know uh how to find a doctor how to find my way around in a foreign country not knowing the language and still surviving uh in a foreign country all of these are your personal solutions and yes i also discovered uh maybe um maybe it will uh i don't know what is the correct terminology for that that um spending time with your own self discovering yourself is very very peaceful and blissful and a bit of uh, you know uh, that that theme that counting your blessings every day helped a lot and in this covid pandemic lockdown what dr george was saying i actually uh, found happiness or you know a stressless environment by creating my own bubble for my people in the building where i live uh you know making sure especially for the children of my building my neighbors children so that they are not left alone because i could because i can relate to being isolated being alone myself all my life so i could feel the misery of those kids not the elder ones so i created a bubble in my own house and i made sure i i invited the mothers to see that i am you know sanitizing the floors sanitizing the surfaces and they should send their kids only to my house to play and nobody else they should not even visit each other they should only visit each other in my house and i cannot tell you what a happy environment we created as a support only my house was the support system and my neighbors accepted it and i was happy to create that bubble environment so so that the kids who cannot even go out of the building you know no sunshine no fresh air they could at least come and make mess on the floors and leave their toys and eat custard and very simple things you know one real ice cream one real custard box for them so th it was it that was my way of fighting the covid uh, stress hmm. i'm sorry if i took too long no that's fine it's interesting to know different stories and different this is why i've uh, typed on in the chat room that everybody is different we all have different background we all have individual differences and we should respect that you see when you're talking about ice creams let me uh, move to uh, dr amal dr amal the clinical yes. nutritionist yes, yes. <laughs> if you can share your thoughts <laughs> No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Just to move from you to Dr. Amal. 
Yes, Dr. Amal. Okay, thank you very much. And mashallah, the nice vibe that you have. Uh, I love the way that when you feel lonely, you just share all the children in your house. I love it. So nice. <laughs> Uh, actually, for uh, for me, um, maybe because I'm working in the health field, so it wasn't something that it is threatening in my life. Um, in the same time, um, I believe that always there is hope. Actually, my name is Amal. Amal in English it means hope. So uh, always I have this. Yani always I think that World World War One uh, and World War Two plus Hiroshima bomb, plus all the wars that happen in our life, still there is people were alive. And still they are, uh, they stay all the time and they, are, don't, they don't have any diseases. So it's the same concept that happened to me during the pandemic. Actually, when they said that uh, there is lockdown, believe it or not, I was so happy. I was, you know, <laughs> exciting that I'm not going to the university, I'm not going to do the whole task all the time, um, I'm not going to my clinic, now I'm in the clinic, um, uh, I don't have to go for the things, for the social uh, media things, or even for the media things for me, um, I don't have to participate in all these associations that I'm with, so it was so nice to just stay home and release, relax, nothing to do. Actually, even my children, they don't feel the fear because mama said it's okay. It's nothing that, that will happen. It's a virus like any virus in the world that it comes and it will go. So they don't feel the fear. And of course, uh, uh, I think Dr. I don't know um, uh, his name, Dr. Thomas. Yes. Uh, yes. Dr. Thomas, he said that he loved the communication. I love it too. You know, it, it was when there is that we can go outside uh, between nine morning until three. Every day I have to go to the supermarket just to buy one thing, only just to go out and come back. Um, uh, of course, we have our courses in, um, in, uh, online, which is something new, so we have to discover it. In the same time, I was participating as a volunteer in the Ministry of Health, and to do the, uh, the volunteering, you have to go through so many courses under the uh, specialist, uh, Saudi Specialist uh, Association for Health. So those courses, they teach me that it is, it's nothing to be afraid of. Yani it's a virus, but of course, because it's a new, that we have to just investigate until we know what's this thing, the new things. Um, in the same time, Taban, of course, you have to do the good environment or positive environment in the house. Uh, my, my children, they, they are not children, of course, they are big now. And uh, any, each one of them, they are sitting in their rooms. They would be any, every one of them, they have their own chatting with their friends. So I have to uh, create a time to sit together. So what I do, I cook. And I let them sit, to, we, we sit all together and we just eat or play cards or do games or just do chatting. So this is the time that we feel that every one of us, we have to take care of each of us. Uh, um, like I told you, my, my, my positive energy and my vibe show this for my children. So... Um, we don't listen to the social media things that it was all the time makes people be afraid. Uh, every time when my 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 uh, my family they ask me that did you hear that you know this virus will kill uh, this virus people they are dying. So I'm I'm giving them the other side which is the bright side that how many they 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 are now died from this virus. It's less than the one they cure. So we are fine. So because of that, it, it, it comes smoothly. And when it's open again, uh, of course, yani, we feel that it's normal. Alhamdulillah, even in my house, yani, before the pandemic and all this uh, lockdown, uh, we have this rule 
that even if I have a work and my husband and we stayed until five or six o'clock at night, we have to sit in one table to eat our meals so we can chat in this time. So we did not feel that this is a new thing during the pandemic, but I have to make more time with them because, you know, they are feeling sometimes they need their friends. So I asked them to just make a chatting virtually. Uh, I always do it. I just sit in the living room uh, and do chatting with my friends, do chatting with my mother, with my other families. So they see that it's, it's fine for me. I'm not feeling that it is, uh, I'm lonely. So they do the same thing and they feel that they are still the same with their, uh, with their families or their, their friends. But alhamdulillah, it wasn't bad. Yani. Lovely, lovely. Good to know the positive things you have implemented in life. For the last remarks, I will go to Mr. Hamid, the quiet guy. <laughs> Mr. Hamid, uh, can you share your story with us? How was it? What were the measures you took? And if we can just get inspiration from you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Jolly. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, Higher Management and Jubilation team for organizing such a nice event. Very few organizations uh, have a unit like Jubilation Office to promote happiness uh, and positivity among the employees. So when you ever, like in the morning, you open your email box, you will definitely find some email from the Jubilation Office with some good news. Thank you so, so much. this is one thing yeah, that put a smile on your face. <clears throat> so during the COVID, like, you know, they, you, you, there are two phases. The first one was the lockdown, and then we have certain spaces of time when you can go out. So I'm lucky to uh, that I maintain my same routine, work routine, as uh, it was in the normal days, because uh, online I was doing work from home. And I try to give us uh, the same number of hours to my work the normally I gave in the office. And uh, after that, I try to be in touch with my friends uh, through phone and uh, through video chats. So we are constantly, uh, you know, spending time around one hour or two hours with my family and friends. So it remains me energized and active. Great. So now the, sec yeah, the second phase that we have right now, and uh, even in the first phase, uh, I do exercise to spend my time. And it will not only uh, you know make my mood happy, it will re relax down my stress as well. Not only that, I try to do cooking and new dishes. So now uh, the one benefit that I got from the COVID is that now I'm a good cook. I can cook many dishes. Your wife so, is like <laughs> <laughs> The drawback of uh, COVID is that my wedding has been postponed for three times. Oh my God. <laughs> so my comment was not appropriate. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Rest of the time, yeah, watching Netflix. So it was a nice spending time during the COVID. It's a different experience, but I try to maintain my same routine so that I can cope up with the stress of this COVID-19. And the one way that I uh, agree with Dr. Amal, even this for one buying one small thing, I go out, whatever the slot we got, and go out and buy something. So it will have a you know change of environment. At least you are going out from your home to change, see view different things. And uh, I keep my windows open for most of the time, so fresh air and you know fresh light comes inside my house and room. So this is the thing of uh, uh, you know coping up with the stress during COVID nineteen. That how I dealt with it. Can I can I do the 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 body language reading not here but the speech reading language uh, the interpretation for Mr. Hamid? Mr. Hamid, from take all that, thirty seconds, please. Yes, Arjun, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, uh, all his ex all his stress management techniques revolve around waiting. You know, waiting for the big day to come, <laughs> waiting for the lockdown to be over, opening windows, looking for fresh air, doing exercise, Exercising. going out. You know, just to kill time. So, all the best. Inshallah, you will get married soon, Mr. Hamid. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Mr. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much, all the panelists. Anybody for the closing remark? Any one of you? Just yes. you can take 30 seconds, just one 30 seconds last. Yes, Miss Miss. Um, um, you know, I am glad you added me that, you know, they are all married or about to be married people. So I'm the only one uh, most eligible single, uh, perpetual single person. So I think my tips should matter also to many people here uh, because because I think I think if you are or you are forced to be isolated like Dr. George, I think you must retain or develop your sense of humor. Find out which what makes you laugh. For me, I discovered that finding those funny stay home videos, washing hand videos on Twitter, they were fun time. You know, the, the, uh, the, the, the online meetings going wrong, you know, really, you know, those, uh, those little videos are fun and they are a best stress reduction technique these days. Try it. Love if you want, I can forward you many funny videos, how online meetings went wrong, how people were staying home and what were they doing. That would be great. I will look forward to that. And Dr. George would also, right, Dr. George? Yeah. So, yeah, sure. so thank you very much, Dr. Noura, Dr. George, Ms. Bisba, Dr. Amal, and Mr. Hamid for joining us. We truly appreciate, and I believe most of us have learned something new from uh, your experiences. Uh, so lovely talking to you guys. Thank you so much. I wish we could continue. Thank but, you. Uh, you know, our guest is waiting, and I'm so sorry. Uh, and uh, I would now hand over to Miss Noura, Miss Noura Krimli to introduce our next guest. We are lucky to have uh, Miss Noor Balfaki with us. Uh, and I'm sorry, uh, Miss Noor, for uh, you know this delay. I know we are uh, 20 minutes late. I apologize for that. Uh, over okay. to you, Miss Noura. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh jami'an. Shukran lhuduraqum. Ashkur al-istad Noor Balfaki ala gubula hal da'watna. الصراحة ما راح أوفيك حقك بإني أتكلم بنبذة بسيطة عنك واختصارا للوقت اللي متبقي بس حابة إني أوضح إنه الأستاذة نور تمارس الكوتشينج والتوجيه من من 2014 وهي مستشارة بيركمان من 2019 وتستخدم كمان مقياس بيركمان وبرنامج وايلد فيت وغيرها من العلوم اللي تعلمتها لمساعدة الناس في تحسين جودة حياتهم ومعرفة شغفهم وتطويرهم المهاراتهم الحياتية بشكل عام ليكونوا أكثر سعادة وعطاء وكمان نشأت الأستاذة نور في عائلة معطاءة ما شاء الله تبارك الله مما أثر على اختياراتها المهنية وساهم في تحديد شغفها في الحياة الذي أصبح الوقود الذي يمدها بالقوة والسعادة لتمارس كل أدوارها في الحياة وهذا الحافز بحد ذاته جعلها تبدأ في رحلة عميقة لاكتشاف ذاتها منذ عام 2010 جعلها تهتم بالبعد النفسي والروحي للذات وتوظيفه بشكل يرفع من الإنجاز والسعادة أنا حقيقي فخورة بأنك أنت اليوم معانا وشكرا مرة ثانية لقبولك دعوتنا وأتفضلي فخورين بأنه إحنا نسمع للموضوع اللي هو السعادة حالة وليست هدف شكرا لك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما أعرف ستسمعوني ولا لا أوكي اهلا وسهلا فيكم وشكرا على الدعوه وشكرا على السيشنز الجميله والمحاضرات والنقاشات يعني حقيقه انا يعني الانطباع اللي اخذته الى الان انه المجتمع في جامعه امير سلطان هو مجتمع ايجابي مجتمع سعيد مليء بالاشياء الملهمه مليء بالتجارب الجميله فانا جدا سعيده اكون معاكم اليوم اعذروني انا يمكن اول مره في حياتي استخدم جوجل تيمز uh, I'm trying to, to share. Okay. طيب. تقدروا تشوفوا ال presentation. نورا أكدي لي زي تقدروا. نعم نقدر نشوف. ممتاز. طيب. أم, طبعا قبل ما أبدأ بس حابة أقول إنه كل سنة كل الأمهات بخير وسعادة وسعيدين. تصادف يوم السعادة العالمي مع يوم الأم فأتمنى لكل الأمهات حياة سعيدة مليئة بالنجاح والخير كمان من الأشياء اللي أبغى برضو أكد عليها في بعض الـ بعض الـ بعض الـ السيدات هم مش أمهات يعني ما عندهم أولاد لكن في لكل أم 
لكل أخت لكل عمة لكل خالة مارست دور الأمومة بشكل أو بآخر فأتمنى لكم يوم أم سعيد طيب أنا حبدأ ب ليش أنا اخترت العنوان هذا أنا في رحلتي في اكتشاف ذاتي بدأت يمكن من سبعة وثمانية سنوات ووصلت لقناعة إنه كلنا بنبحث عن السعادة هم هدفين يعني كلنا بنحاول نوصل لهم يا إما سعادة يا إما وفرة فكل أحد بيسوي أي حاجة بيتعلم شيء جديد يبغى يكون سعيد بي بي بيروح لوظيفة جديدة يبغى يكون سعيد بي بيتعلم مهارة جديدة يبغى يكون سعيد بيعمل تواصل مع أحد من الأصدقاء أو الأهل يبغى يكون سعيد فكلنا في النهاية بنسعى أن نكون أكثر سعادة وأكثر وفرة إذا توفرت الوفرة جاءت معها السعادة إذا توفرت السعادة جاءت معها الوفرة ولما نتكلم وفرة ما نتكلم بس وفرة مادية نتكلم وفرة في الوقت وفرة في الصحة وفرة في الرخاء طيب أبغاكم تروحوا على www.menti.com وأبغى أبغى كده أجس النبض طبعا بعد ما سمعتوا الدكتور جوناثان وبعد ما سمعتوا الانسبريشنال توكس حقت كل اللي شاركوا في البانل أبغى أسألكم سؤال وبعدين هذا السؤال حرجع أسألكم إياه في آخر المحاضرة اليوم فخلوني بس أبغاكم تروحوا على منتي وححط لكم ال طيب I will present my screen عشان تشوفوا الكود طيب إذا رحتوا على منتي حيطلع لكم الكود الآن فأبغاكم تجاوبوا على هذا السؤال وحتبدأ تظهر النتائج على طول على الشاشة سعادتي قراري وأنا المتحكم بها ما مدى اتفاقك مع هذه العبارة روح على www.menti.com and use the code اللي هو 3878932 بدأتوا؟ أنا ماني شايفة أحد دخل لسه. أيوه بدأوا أهو في عندنا بوت واحد المفروض بعد كل الانسبريشنال توكس اللي صارت الم... يعني أتوقع المتفقين مع هذا الشيء أكثر. إذا في أحد بيواجه مشكلة هي يعني بس تحتاجوا تروحوا على الموقع وتحطوا الكود. أوكي واضح إنه في اتفاق عالي. ممتاز ممتاز الحقيقة أنا أشكر I agree I agree absolutely I agree absolutely طيب عشان ما نأخذ من الوقت كثير بس واضح إنه في إجماع على موضوع إنه إحنا متفقين إنه السعادة قرار وإحنا المتحكمين بها فا I'll go back لمو لل لل ال presentation ونرجع تاني نشوف ايش عندنا اليوم حنتكلم عن ترى على فكره كل اللي تقال اليوم هو حاجه يعني يعني حارجع اكد عليها بس حقولها بطريقه ثانيه بالذات لما نجي نتكلم على موضوع التبس والتريكس عشان تو بيكم هابي وكيف نبدا نعرف السعاده بالنسبه لنا احنا طيب ليش السعاده مش هدف عشان نقدر نجاوب على السؤال هذا ابغاكم تفكروا معايا في بعض الاسئله أنا دائما أتساءل وأسألها لنفسي هل تعلمناها في المدارس والجامعات؟ هل إحنا تعلمنا إنه كيف نكون سعداء وأكثر سعادة؟ هل في مناهج تعلمنا الشيء هذا ولا لا؟ وهل في كتب علمتنا الشيء هذا أو لا؟ شايفين الطفل هذا كيف سعيد وهو شايل أخوه؟ هل إحنا نقدر نفصل لمستوى السعادة هذا؟ فاكرين نفسنا لما كنا صغار أبسط حاجة بسيطة أبسط شيء ممكن يخلينا سعداء وما عندنا كل الهموم والمشاكل والتحليل اللي بنعيش اللي بنعيشه الان بعد ما كبرنا وبدانا ندخل في الحياه. نور ما قاتك بس ممكن لو تحط السهم على الشريحه نفسها عشان نشوفها؟ انا عملت شيرنج برنت سكرين سوري شير البرزنتيشن مود ما هو طالع لكم؟ الا طالع لنا بس لو تحطي على الشريحه ذاتها. طيب خلينا شايفينها؟ صحيح اوكي طيب يصير هل احنا فعلا 
هل هل لها علاقة بالوعي الذاتي؟ هل للسعادة هل الإنسان كل ما زادت زاد فهمه لمشاعره لأفكاره لأهدافه كل ما كان أكثر سعادة أو لا؟ إيش علاقة السعادة بالنجاح؟ هل كل الناجحين سعداء؟ وأنا حقيقة دائما أحب أسأل السؤال هذا ولما أجي عند النقطة هذه أحب أفرق بين حاجتين بين نجاح وفلاح إيش الفرق بينهم؟ مو كل ناجح سعيد بس الناجح اللي هو سعيد هذا وصل لمرحلة الفلاح مو كل مشهور مو كل غني سعيد أو ملياردير هو سعيد لكن في بعض الأمثلة أنا أقدر أقول لكم إياها مثلا ريتشارد برانسون حقت فيرجن هذا ملياردير من أغنى أغنياء العالم لو دخلتوا على أي حساباته على السوشيال ميديا حتشوفوا كيف هو يعيش السعادة في كل جانب من جوانب حياته فهل هو فهو وصل لمرحلة الفلاح هي مو بس بس النجاح كثير ناس ناجحين في النهاية انتهى بهم مطاف للانتحار لا سمح الله أو للإدمان أو إنهم للأمراض المزمنة أو غيره فإحنا نبغى نوصل لمرحلة الفلاح والنجاح هل نقدر نقيس السعادة ولا هي تزيد وتنقص أكيد تزيد وتنقص بس أنا كيف أعرف ليش أنا اليوم متضايق هل عندي هذا الوعي إنه أنا أعرف ليش اليوم ماني حاسس بالسعادة اللي دائما أنا كل يوم أحس فيها أو لا ومن المتحكم بسعادتي واعتقد كلنا سرنا اجمعنا على فكره انه انا الوحيد المتحكم بسعادتي ما في اي احد ثاني يقدر يحرمني من السعاده السعاده هذه او يسلبها مني وزي ما قلنا السعاده قرار انا اخذه انا اقرر انا اللي اقول هل كيف لانه هي كلها تعتمد على طريقه تفاعلي مع الاشياء اللي بتصير حولي فعشان كده هو قرار اديكم مثال في مثلا اليوم انت قاعدين في البيت وعندكم غيوف وفجاه انقطعت المويه. مين اللي قرر كيف اتعامل مع انه المويه انقطعت في البيت؟ ممكن الناس اللي يميلوا الى التشكي والتذمر والقلق حيقلقانين وما اعرف شيء وفي احد ثاني ممكن حكايه المويه انقطعت في البيت يقلبها ل يعني موقف كوميدي كل البيت يبدا يعيش فيه مع الضيوف ويصير فيه حاله من الفرح وال واللي هي السخرية على الموقف بطريقة إيجابية بحيث تخلي إنه الموقف هذا اللي صار ممكن يسبب تعاسة لأحد ممكن يكون مصدر سعادة لأحد تاني عشان كده هو القرار عندنا طيب السعادة قرار السعادة أسلوب حياة السعادة نابعة من الداخل مرة جدا مهم إنه إحنا نركز على هذه النقطة لانه لو احنا حنعتمد حنعتمد ان السعاده جايه من الخارج حنعيش حياتنا كلها واحنا في حاله تعاسه. لو احنا اعتمدنا ان السعاده تجي لما اتخرج من الجامعه معناته لما اتخرج اوكي حصلت على التخرج اتخرج طب وبعدين واتس نكست؟ سو هي السعاده مو مايلستون، السعاده مو هدف اوصل له او محطه اوصل لها، السعاده هي عباره عن رحله استمتاع بها. احنا دائما ماشيين بننتقل لمرحله من مرحله الاخرى في كل مرحله انا لازم استمتع بيها واشوف الاشياء الايجابيه فيها حتى الفشل يعتبر من النعم اللي ربنا انعم انعم, أنعم بها علينا ليه لانه من الفشل نتعلم من الفشل ننتقل لنتعلم الاخطاء وتعرفوا اديسون كم مره حاول توماس اديسون عشان يخترع الكهرباء بعد كم محاوله بعد 99 محاوله لما سالوه قال لهم انا تعلمت 99 طريقه اني ما ما افشل فيها. ف ذيس از هو كان بيشوف كيف بينظر لموضوع الفشل. في النهايه الفشل هذا وتراكمه ادى لانه يسبب يسوي لنا اعظم اختراع اختراع في في في, في, في البشريه اللي هو الكهرباء. للان ولا اي حاجه حتى نقول انترنت ولا نقول سوشيال ميديا ولا نقول روبوتس ولا نقول ذكاء صناعي كلها اعتمدت على الكهرباء، لو ما في كهرباء كل هذه الاشياء ما كانت تم اختراعها. طيب أنا أبغى أتكلم يمكن شوية قريب من الطريقة اللي تناولها الدكتور جوناثان بس حتكلم عن 15 حاجة لو تخلينا عنها حنقدر نوصل للسعادة وحيكون أغلب الوقت في يومنا هو سعيد هذه ال 15 حاجة مقتبسة من كتاب اسمه 15 things you should let go to be happy by Luminita Sabiak طبعا هذه 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 ال 15 حاجه الحقيقه انا يعني قراتها بدات اطبقها حتلاقوا وانا بعرضها عليكم حتلاقوا انه في بعضكم 
اوريدي آه بيمارس بعضها في بعضكم بيمارسها بس ما هو عارف ان هي لها علاقه بشكل كبير بالسعاده في بعضكم آه آه يعني يمكن يستغرب في بعض الاشياء كيف هي ممكن تسبب لنا السعاده فحاخذكم في جوله فيها على عجاله ما حطول في بعضها حطول فيها لانه احس انه هي مره مهمه لكن انا مسكت ال 15 هذول وقسمتهم قسمين القسم الاول اللي هو الانر جيم اللعبه اللعبه الداخليه في مجموعه من هذه ال 15 شيء اللي لازم نسويه هو كله داخلي انت الوحيد اللي تقدر تعملها وتسويها وتنفذها كلها عباره عن افكار معتقدات و مشاعر فاذا قدرنا نتحكم فيها بشكل او باخر كل ما زادت عندنا السعاده اول واحده هي المعتقدات المقيده كثير عندنا معتقدات انا ماني كويس في الرياضيات انا مره ما اقدر اركز في الارقام انا اي حاجه فيها لون احمر على طول توترني كل هذه معتقدات مقيده خلقها عقلنا تمام وصارت بتخلينا ما احنا قادرين نقول اي كان اند اي ويل فصارت تقيدنا وما تخلينا ننتقل للمرحله اللي بعدها كل ما انتبهنا المعتقدات المقيده هذه ايش هي بالضبط كل واحد سال نفسه ايش في معتقد مثلا انا اديكم مثال من المعتقدات المقيده اللي كانت عندي وانتبهت لها بعدين انه انا اتكلم بسرعه فعشان كده انا يعني ما اقدر اسوي محاضرات عشان كده انا يمكن افضل ما اخليها بال اكتب بوست في السوشيال ميديا وكذا. الين ما بدات انتبه انه هذا معتقد مقيد بالنسبه لي وبدات اغيره وحسيت انه صار في تطور، فكثير معتقدات مثلا انا لازم اكل ثلاثه وجبات في اليوم عشان تكون تكون صحتي كويسه، لو زادت وجبه رابعه وزني حيزيد مثلا. كل هذه معتقدات مقيده لازم نكون واعيين لها على اساس انه نبدا ما تخليها ما تكون حجر عثره بالنسبه لنا انه ننتقل لسعاده اكبر. النقطه اللي بعدها اللي هي حديث النفس الانهزامي اللي هو السلف توك اللي هو دائما سلف سابوتاج او دائما في لوم تقريع للذات في افكار دائما محبطه وسلبيه فدائما نقول لا تصدق دائما عقلك بالذات لما بيتكلم اشياء سلبيه ومحبطه فدائما نستخدم عقلنا بطريقه او باخرى انه نحوله يكون ايجابي اكثر ويشوف الصوره الايجابيه في كل حاجه بتصير لنا يعني سمعت اليوم حكاوي كثير على كيف هم البروفيسورز والدكاتره اللي عندكم كيف خلوا البانديميك وقت الحظر وقت ممتع وقت سعيد استفادوا منه في في المقابل ناس ثانيين اخذوه كعائق وما قدروا يعملوا اي حاجه وضاعت عليهم السنه مستنيين نرجع ثاني للوقت العادي مستنيين يرجع للايام العاديه قبل قبل الحظر وقبل الكورونا فايش اللي صار معهم فضلوا محلهم سر وما تطوروا انا من الناس اللي في في البانديميك في السنه الماضيه وقت الحظر يمكن انجزت انجازات اكثر من كنت انجزها في الايام العاديه وتعلمت مره اشياء كثير وكثير ناس مثلي استفادوا من وقت الحظر وقت الهذا ليه؟ لانه المايند سيت عندهم طريقه نظرتهم للحظر كانت نظره ايجابيه كانوا دائما بيشوفوا الجانب المشرق فيها. النقطه اللي بعدها التشكي الحقيقه لو تبغى تقتل اي علاقه زيد الشكوى. الجو الزحمة العمالة يعني دائما نتشكى عن الأشخاص عن الأحداث عن المواقف كل ما زدنا الشكوى كل ما فضلنا في منطقة الإحباط والاكتئاب وما قدرنا نروح للمنطقة اللي بعدها ما مو معناته انه ما نقول مثلا في شيء معاجبنا ما نتكلم عنه نتكلم عنه بس لا نقلبه لي شكوى أه حتى في الـ في الليدر شيب وفي الـ في الورك انفايرمنت دائما بنقول لو زاد التشكي بين الزملاء في الفريق الواحد ما ينجزوا ما ينجزوا ابدا وما يصير في انجاز فليست المواقف هي من تثير المشاعر بالزاويه اللي اخترت انت ترى منها فعشان كده التفكير الايجابي مره مهم ولازم نبدا نوقف شويه التشكي آه لانه آه اذا في عندنا حته او فكره حسن الظن آه انه آه لعل له عذر وانت تلومه 
يعني أنا واحد من الصالحين كان يقول لو شفت أخي واقف على جبل والخمر تقطر من لحيته كان حقول سكبت عليه فشايفين قد إيش في التماس للعذر وحسن ظن لدرجة إنه حتى لو أنا شفته لحيته بتقطر خمر حقول إنه هو أنتكبت عليه ففكرة التشكي دائما تجي من سوء الظن فكرة التشكي دائما تجي من إنه دائما أحد تاني هو الملام مش أنا الملام وهنا تجي النقطة اللي بعدها اللي هي نقطة الأعذار دائما الناس اللي دائما عندهم أعذار ودائما بيدوروا على أحد تبليم إنه يلوم يلقوا عليه اللوم هذول هم الناس اللي يفضلوا محلك سر وما يتطوروا ودائما إنه لما نكون حولهم هذول الناس اللي أصحاب الأعذار ما تحسوا بالارتياح وتحسوا إنه طاقتكم في أحد قاعد بيسحب منها حاجة نجي للنقطة اللي بعدها اللي هي مقاومة التغيير آه كلنا نعرف وبالذات بعد اللي صار في 2020 إنه التغيير هو الثابت الوحيد في حياتنا فكل ما كان عندك قدرة على التعامل مع التغيير كل ما كنت أكثر سعادة وهنا حابة أتكلم شوية عن الريزيلينس بروفيسور جوناثان أتكلم عن الريزيلينس أنا شوية حفصل فيه لأنه حقيقة أنا من الأول ما فهمت الكونسبت حق الريزيلينس اللي هو المرونة مع الصمود عرفت إيش يعني أكون سعيدة متفائلة وإيجابية وكيف هذا السعادة والإيجابية والتفاؤل صنعوا مني أشياء كثير كثير أنجزها في وقت قصير إيش يعني الريزيلينس؟ الريزيلينس هو عبارة أن قدرتك على الوقوف بعد ما تسقط قدرتك على أنه تكون أفضل بعد ما تخرج من أي محنة كيف تحول المحنة إلى منحة هذول الناس اللي عندهم الريزيلينس عالي والمرونة هذه وأنا ما أحب أسميها مرونة بس لأنه فيها قوة أحب أقول مرونة مع صمود مرونة مع قوة هذول الناس هذول سعيدين إيش ما كان بيمر عليهم في حياتهم يعرفوا كيف يقلبوا أي تحدي لصالحهم يعرفوا كيف يقلبوا الطاولة على كل الظروف اللي بتمر حوالينهم طبعا التغيير اللي صار في 2020 تغيرت طريقة الدراسة تغيرت طريقة العمل تغيرت طريقة الأكل تغيرت طريقة الترفيه تغيرت أشياء كثير في حياتنا الشخص اللي قدر يتعامل مع التغيير هذا هو الشخص اللي قدر يكون أكثر سعادة لما نجي نقول الريزيلينس إيش هو؟ هو خمسة مكونات فيه المكون الأول اللي هو السلف ريلاينس أو الثقة بالذات إذا أنت ما عندك ثقة بذاتك ما رح تقدر تتعامل مع التغيير أبدا فالثقة بالذات جزء جدا مهم ولها علاقة كبير بموضوع الريزيلينس الشيء الثاني اللي هو السلف اكسبريشن اللي هو التعبير لازم دائما نعبر بما نشعر به إذا فضلنا كاتمين كاتمين ما بنقول عندي مشكلة عندي تحدي أروح أتكلم عندي لأنه لما لما أتكلم اللي 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 معاك بيشتغل معاك ولا عايش معاك حيكون عارف انت بتمر بايش. سو السلف اكسبريشن او التعبير. النقطة الثالثة في الريزيلينس اللي هي الريتشنج اوت. ترى مو عيب اني اروح اطلب مساعدة. مو عيب انه انا اروح اسأل احد مر عليه تجربة زي كده مو عيب انه انا استعين بصديق، استعين بخبير، استعين باحد من الاهل. والان موضوع الكوتشنج يعني صار موجود ومتوفر بشكل كبير، فموضوع الريتشنج اوت والمساعده حتى لو احنا بنشتغل على بروجكت يمكن انت ما ما تتقن مثلا عمل الشرائح والسلايدات في احد ثاني، فلما تسال ان يو جو ان سيك هيلب لما تبدا تعرف انه فتلاقي فتحصل على المساعده وبالتالي يرتفع عندك الريزيلينس. النقطه الرابعه ويمكن ذكرها البروفيسور جوناثان وتكلمتوا عليها حتى في البانل اللي هي المينينج البيربس اند مينينج لما يكون عندك معنى تجد معنى وراء كل شيء تقوم به الريزيلينس عندك يرتفع ليه؟ لانه ساعتها مش النتيجه هي المهمه اللي بالنسبه لك هو العمل اللي بتقوم به هو المهم سو so الرحله هي المهمه الاستمتاع وانت رايح عشان توصل الهدف ولا تحقق النتيجه النتيجه حتبسطك اكيد لو كانت ايجابيه لكن المتعة لما تكون أنت عندك معنى ليش أنت بتسوي الشيء هذا. فالـ purpose and meaning أو المعنى أو الرسالة مهم جداً وترى مرروا ارتباط كبير بالسعادة. الناس اللي عايشين 
من غير هدف أو رسالة قد يكون بعضهم عندهم رسالة ويمكن حتكلم عليها بعدين علاقة الأهداف بالسعادة لكن وجود وجود معنى وجود رسالة يزيد الريزيلينس وبالتالي يزيد السعادة آخر نقطة في الريزيلينس اللي هي الصفاء الذهني أو اللي هو المايندفولنس اللي هو أكون هنا والآن ويمكن حتكلم عليها دحين في النقطة اللي جاية إنه اللي صار في الماضي صار انتهى أنا مش مرتبط به انتهى أنا الآن مركز على الآن أنا أقدر أسوي عشان أنتقل للمستقبل بطريقة أفضل فدائما هنا والآن إنه يكون حاضر حكاية إنه مالتي تاسكينج وأقدر أسوي أكثر من شيء وأنا الآن في الاجتماع قاعدة بفكر في الاجتماع اللي بعده هذا كله يقلل من تركيزنا ويخلينا أقل حضورا وأقل تركيزا فبالتالي الريزيلينس عندنا يتأثر والسعادة عندنا يتأثر لو قدرنا يعني نطور نفسنا من خمس الأشياء هذه قدرتنا على التعامل مع التغيير حترتفع وسعادتنا واستمتاعنا بالحياة في مواجهة هذه التغييرات والتعامل معها حترتفع بشكل كبير أروح للنقطة اللي بعدها اللي قلت لكم حتكلم فيها اللي هي الماضي الناس بتنظر الماضي بنقطتين يا إنه يتحسروا على الأشياء اللي كانت زمان موجودة والآن ما هي موجودة أو لما كنا نقدر نروح أو لما كنا نمشي من غير كمامات أو ما أعرفش إيه أو يقول لك أو اللي زمان ارجع يا زمان في الأغاني بيغنوا إنه كان دائما ماضي أحلى أو بعضهم ينظروا للماضي إنه هو بالذكريات المؤلمة ذكريات الصعبة دائما دائما لما نكون حاضرين الآن وما بنفكر كثير في الماضي حلو لما نحول الماضي الحكمة حلو لما أي شيء صار في الماضي إيش الدرس اللي تعلمت فيه بس من غير ما أربط نفسي بأحاسيسه ومشاعره يعني إذا كانت إيجابية ممكن لما أرجع أتذكر مثلا يوم تخرجي ولا أتذكر لما جبت أول بيبي كوني أم حلو إحساس هذا يحفزني خليني أكون أفضل لكن لما أرجع أفتكر أشياء من ذكريات مؤلمة وتبدأ نفس الأحاسيس ترجع لي إيش اللي حيصير طاقتي حتنزل وسعادتي حتنخفض فعشان كده الماضي هو حلو نبغاه موجود معانا بس كدروس وحكمة فقط يفضل معانا مستمر كدروس وحكمة وخبرة أتعلمناها هي اللي تستمر معانا ونبني عليها ففكرة إنه الحياة رحلة وليست محطة وصول حتخلينا دائما إحنا بنشوف مستمتعين بالرحلة عيننا على المستقبل بس مستمتعين بالحاضر وماخذين دروس الماضي معانا فهي هذه الفكرة كيف التايم لاين حقتنا بين ماضي وحاضر ومستقبل كيف تتعامل مع الماضي والحاضر والمستقبل وإذا أتقنت الشيء هذا حترتفع عندك السعادة المخاوف في البانل ديسكشن استمتعت لما تكلموا على موضوع الخوف دكتورة أمل لما قالت أنا أولادي ما خليتهم ما ما بيحسوا بخوف تجاه الفيروس وكورونا يعني نشوف الجانب الإيجابي الناس اللي تعافوا أكثر بكثير من الناس اللي مرضوا فعلا إذا الخوف إذا تمكن مننا نصير في حالة من الشلل وما نقدر نتطور أبدا ويمكن إحنا كوننا في كرير وكوننا في, في, في قطاع أكاديمي أكثر حاجة الإنسان ممكن يخاف منها إيش؟ يخاف من الفشل أكثر حاجة يخاف الإنسان منها الخوف من الهزيمة أكثر شيء أنا بالنسبة لي أحس أكثر خوف مقيد مقيد هو الخوف من المجهول اللي يقتل عندنا حب المغامرة اللي يقتل عندنا حب التجربة اللي يقتل عندنا أخرج من دائرة الراحة إيش اللي يخليني أفضل دائما في دائرة الراحة أنا خايف خايف من المجهول اللي لو رحت سويت شيء بطريقة جديدة أخاف ما أضبطه عشان أخاف من الفشل فكل ما كان عندنا وعي بالمخاوف هذه حقتنا كل ما كان عندنا قدرة إنه إحنا نتغلب عليها وزي ما قال فرانكلين روزفلت الشيء الوحيد الذي يجب أن نخشاه هو الخوف نفسه لأنه ما في أي حاجة ممكن تحبطنا وتخلينا محلك سر وما ننتقل للمرحلة اللي بعدها وما نزيد سعادتنا قد المخاوف التعلق وما أدراك ما التعلق أنا بالنسبة لي لما وصلت للمرحلة فهمت فيها إيش يعني بالضبط تعلق عرفت كيف أقدر أتغلب على أشياء كثير كانت صعبة في حياتي يمكن الموضوع مو سهل يعني الناس ما تفهم بس حلو ان احنا نحط هدف لنفسنا ممتاز انا حطيت هدف في السنه هذه مثلا ابغى اتعلم اللغه الاسبانيه حطيت حطيت خطه انه كيف حتعلم حاطلع حدخل كورس اونلاين حاشتري كتاب حسوي حطيت خطه المهم انه 
انا مستمتع وانا قاعد اروح للهدف هذا واني قاعد انا وانا قاعد بحضر الكورس انا قاعد مستمتع وانا بشتري كتاب وبقرا وانا قاعد مستمتع بس اذا ما زبطت واذا ما صارت انا برضه كويس فالمشكله انه احنا دائما نربط نفسنا بالنتائج وننسى فكره البروسيس والعمليه نفسها فاللي بيخلينا دائما نحس بالاحباط الشديد ويبدا الريزيلينس عندنا ينزل اذا كان في تعلق شديد بالاهداف احنا بنتحسن كل مره فكل مره تمارس اي حاجه في لما تفك الارتباط بيها تبدا تصير اكثر تقبل واكثر طيبه واكثر طمانينه طبعا من الاشياء اللي تخلي التعلق يزيد هو الخوف فمره يعني تكلم تكلمنا فيها في النقطه السابقه وانا من الاشياء اللي دائما اقولها ثلاثه يعني عندي ثري رولز ثلاثه قواعد مهمه لما طبقتها في حياتي حياتي صارت اكثر سلاسه واكثر سعاده وفي في نفس الوقت بحقق اكثر على المستوى الشخصي على المستوى العملي على المستوى الاجتماعي على مستوى اشياء كثير ثلاثه قواعد لا للتعلق لا للحكم حنتكلم فيها بعدين لما نيجي عند قواعد اللعبه الخارجيه ولا للمقاومه والرفض يعني كثير اشياء تصير في حياتنا عشان نقدر نخرج منها لازم نقبلها اول حاجه كما هي بعدين عشان اول ما نقبل الشيء لان اول اي حاجه تقاومها تزيد هذه قاعده كونيه موجوده كل ما شيء نقاومه يزيد فكل ما قللنا المقاومه كل ما صار عندنا قدره على انه ننتقل للمرحله اللي بعدها توقعات الاخرين طبعا تربينا في مجتمع لازم تصير زي ابوك لازم تصير زي كذا لازم تتكلم بالطريقه هذه لازم تلبس بالطريقه هذه والسوشيال ميديا يعني خلقت حاله من النمطيه في حياتنا فلازم نمشي بي بي نمشي بطريقه عشان نلبي توقعات الاخرين وفيها نفقد هويتنا وفيها نفقد اللي احنا نحبه وفيها نفقد الاشياء اللي اللي تسعدنا فعلا فلما نكون يعني ما حقول ما نهتم بتوقعات الاخرين مهمه بس نقلل اهميتها شويه لانه ايش اللي بيصير؟ يعني انا مدير يعني اذا حقه طول الوقت مهم اهم انا بسوي الشغل بس عشان المدير يرضى علي ترى مره مشكله كبيره معناته انا ما بسوي الشغل عشان انا لازم اسوي الشغل بالطريقه دي انا بسوي الشغل عشان ابغى احصل على رضا المدير ولا احصل على تقييم في اخر السنه فهذه من من الاشياء اللي مره مهمه انه احنا ننتبه لها دحين احنا نبدا في قواعد اللعبه الخارجيه. قواعد اللعبه الخارجيه لها علاقه بالتعامل مع الاخرين، لها علاقه شويه بالعلاقات. فاول واحده ادهاش الاخرين وهي مرتبطه بالتوقعات اللي تكلمنا فيها. يعني هنا هنا ايجو، نبدا يجي ايجو. احنا رسمنا كلنا صوره لنفسنا ويمكن في التربيه ترسمت لنا هذه الصوره وتربينا عليها. فنقعد حياتنا كلها بنحاول نحافظ على هذه الصوره. أنا ممكن أعيش ألم عشان الصورة دي ما 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 تختل، أنا ممكن أجي على نفسي مرة كثير عشان الصورة هذه تفضل زي ما هي، زي ما أنا رسمتها لنفسي. فهنا كل ما قللنا موضوع إنه impressing others أنا بحاول أدهشهم ودائما أكون impressive ودائما أنا الأحسن وأنا الأفضل ما ما حيخليني سعيدة، خلوا التركيز أكثر على أنا ليش بسوي كده على المعنى، على الرسالة، على الهدف. على الخدمة سيرفيس قالها بروفيسور جوناثان على العطاء على انه انا مناطة بي المسؤولية اذا كنت بشتغل انا مناطة بي هذه المسؤولية انا لازم اسويها ب بافضل ما يمكن اللي هو انا عندي موتو احبه اقول دائما اقوله دائما ولما بعمل كوتشنج لاحد بقول له دو يور بيست اند فورجيت ذا ريست مو مهم احد يقول لك شكرا مو مهم احد يقول لك ثانك يو مو مهم احد هذا انت ب... انت لازم تستمتع بانه انت يور دوينج يور بيست انه انت بتعطي افضل ما عندك ترى يعني حتى في ايه في القران حقيقه انا دائما اربطها بهذا المعنى اللي هي وان ليس للانسان الا ما سعى ربنا سبحانه وتعالى قال انا حديك سعيك مقابل سعيك النتيجه حق سعيك هذه ما هي شغلك هذه مو عليك تمام؟ وأن سعيه سوف يرى. حتاخذ النتيجة in a way or another يرى، مو شرط أنها تكون مقابل هذا العمل الآن، ممكن تيجي بعدين. ممكن تيجي من طرف آخر، ما له علاقة بالعمل اللي أنت سويته. فـ فـ إدهاش الآخرين هنا 
مرتبط كثير بانه احنا كثير بنركز على النتائج وننسى موضوع السعي موضوع الاستمتاع بالسعي نفسه وفي واحد من الناس اللي انا تابعهم بيقول انه بمجرد ما تحصل على المتعه وانت بتسوي الشيء انت اخذت الجائزه حقك او الريورد حقك او النتيجه بمجرد حصولك على المتعه اللي هي السعاده وانت سعيد ومستمتع وبتسوي الشيء انت سو انت اخذت الجائزه مو شرط النتيجه بعدين كلنا نسعى انه احنا ننجح في كل شيء بنسويه بس زي ما ذكرت من اول الفشل برضه يعتبر من النعم الكبيره ربي انعم فيها علينا نجي للنقد النقد يعني مهم وحلو في وقته مع الشخص المناسب في الموقف المناسب لكن مشكلتنا روحوا ادخلوا على تويتر عشان تعرفوا كيف حياتنا ماشيه كلها تعتمد على النقد الاخرين دائما بس طول الوقت ننتقد ننتقد اللبس ننتقد الشكل ننتقد ايش قال طول الوقت ننتقد والحقيقه النقد بيخفض عندنا السعاده ليه لانه انشغلنا بالخارج ونسينا الداخل حطينا نفسنا في جهه والاخرين في جهه لكن لو احنا نفكر انه احنا كلنا متشابهين كلنا كلنا بنحاول نوصل للسعاده حطينا اهداف نفسنا وبنحاول نحققها ساعتها حلتمس العذر ما انتقد ما حقول هذا خطا هذا صح متى انتقد لو طلب مني النقد متى انتقد لو طلب مني انتقد عشان اوجه عشان اطور عشان احسن بس النقد مجرد النقد ما يساعد اي احد واكثر واحد يعني يعني ما يستفيد من النقد هو الشخص نفسه اللي ده ينتقد بعد النقد يجي التصنيف طبعا اول ما انتقد لازم ابدا اصنف آه هذا جيد هذا غلط هذا سيء هذا ممتاز هذا مدري ايه هذا كل يعني كل واحد له زاويه يشوف منها انت الان ممكن الان بتشوف مثلا تصرف معين خطا بعد كم شهر ما حتشوفه خطا لانه احنا بنتغير كمان فلما نقعد نصنف نعمل ليبلنج للاشياء واحنا ما عندنا هذاك الوعي الكامل بتتاثر عندنا موضوع السعاده وتبدا تنخفض السعاده كمان من ضمن الاشياء اللي مره مهمه والحقيقه هذا الكوت انا احبه لدكتور واين داير اتس بيتر تو بي كايند ذان رايت يعني احنا عايشين الحياه كاننا احنا في صراع ودائما لازم احنا نكون دائما على حق مو لازم دائما نكون على حق اذا 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 انا في, في حتنازل عن انه انا اقول شفته انا كنت صح شفته انا رايي هو الصح مقابل مقابل انه شخص ثاني يحس بال بالاحتواء يحس بالامباثي اللي احنا دائما التعاطف التفهم مو مهم دائما نكون احنا دائما على صواب وانه رأينا هي الصحيحه واللي نسويه هو الصح دائما عادي انه ما نكون دائما على صواب في مقابل احسس احد قدامي بانه انا مهتم بي اي كير اباوت يو كلنا في حلة تعلم مش دائما احنا على صواب وهذه النقطه مره مهمه اللوم العتاب تبغى تقتل اي علاقه كثر فيها العتاب دائما العتاب يقتل اي حاجه اي علاقه بين اي اثنين ف او انه مش يعني مو انا السبب هم السبب دائما ترى دائما يعني من اصعب الاشياء اللي ممكن تخلي الشخص يعني تخليه دائما محلك سر وما يتطور انه هو مش السبب انا ما انا ما لي ابوي وامي هم السبب دربوني كده ما تدربت ما علموني هم السبب الشركه ما بتسوي لي تدريب السبب الدكتور لما بيشرح ما بيشرح كويس فعشان كده انا ما بفهم دائما في احد ثاني هو السبب الايه اللي تقول عليكم انفسكم لا يضركم من ضل اذا اهتديتم لما دائما بتعلق اخطائك ومشاكلك على الاخرين انت ما حت ما حتتطور ابدا فدائما لما نقول انا السبب في كل شيء بيصير لي في حياتي ايش اللي يصير؟ يصير سلطة عندك، أنت المتحكم، لكن لما تعطي السلطة لغيرك هو السبب، أخويا السبب، أمي السبب، النظام السبب، الـ 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 الكورونا السبب، إيش اللي بيصير؟ أنت ما عندك سلطة وما تقدر تغير حاجة، وبالتالي سعادتك حتنزل. آخر واحدة في الـ 15 شيء إنه نتخلى عنها عشان نتحلى بالسعادة هي التحكم. نبغى دائما كل الأمور تمشي زي ما حطيناها، زي ما خططنا لها. انت خطط ابدا بالعمل والنتيجه مفيدك 
التحكم انه كل حاجه تكون زي ما انا ابغى هتقلل كثير من سعادتك واللي يبغى يكون يربح كل المعارك يخسرها كلها فمش دائما يعني ابغى الكنترول عندي وبالتحكم عندي كل ما قللت من الكنترول والتحكم كل ما زادت عندي السعاده الان حنتقل للجزء الثاني من المحاضره اليوم الحقيقه هو اقرب شيء لقلبي يعني اتمنى هذه 15 شيء لو 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 بنطبق منها 10 او بنطبق منها 8 صدقوني او انتبهنا وبدانا نطبق بعض كل ما زدناها كل ما حتزيد السعاده طيب السعاده علاقتها بالاهداف في كورس اونلاين سويته لواحد اسمه فيشن لك يعني هذا الشارت من الكورس قارن بين الفيجن فور فيوتشر اللي هي الواحد يكون عنده اهداف ورؤيه للمستقبل والسعاده في اللحظه الان اللي هو السعاده هنا والان قسم الناس اربع جروبات تمام الناس اللي عندهم سعاده منخفضه وما عندهم رؤية للمستقبل هذول الناس المحبطين اللي بيدخلوا في حالات اكتئاب ما عندهم أي تصور فين رايحين وما عندهم أي رؤية للمستقبل وفي نفس الوقت ما بيستمتعوا بأي شيء يسووه فهذول اللي هم في المربع اللي تحت على اليسار طيب في ناس ما عندهم رؤية للمستقبل هم المربع اللي فوق على اليسار ما عندهم أي رؤية ماشيين كده من غير أهياد أهداف من غير ما يحطوا نفسهم شيء لكنهم مستمتعين اللي هم عارفين ماخذين مبدا طن نشتعش تنتعش اللي انا ماشي فدول دائما يكونوا ضمن مخططات الاخرين يكونوا ضمن اهداف الاخرين الحياه تسيرهم يمين ويسار بس هم مستمتعين اقلها احسن من الناس اللي تحتهم هذول اللي هم عايشين في حاله اكتئاب وحاله احباط بس في ناس اللي هم اللي عندهم اللي هم في المربع اليمين اللي تحت هذول عندهم فيجن وهذول اغلب الناس اللي عندهم كرير اللي بيشتغلوا عندهم اهداف بيحققوها وفيري امبيشس طموح طموحين يبغوا يترقوا ويبغوا يكبروا ويبغوا يصيروا ماسكين مناصب كبيره ويبغوا بس ما هم عارفين يستمتعوا باللحظه ما هم عارفين يستمتعوا باللي بيسووه لانه عينهم بس على النتيجه باي ذا واي وهذا اللي تكلمنا عليها في امن اول هذول يحققوا اهداف تمام لكن يبدأ يعانوا من مشاكل السترس ويبدأ يعانوا من مشاكل صحية ويمكن يخسروا علاقات أنا مرة كارير فوكست فما هم قادرين يعيشوا حياة فيها سعادة واستمتاع لأنهم مرة مركزين على موضوع الهدف لازم يحقق الهدف ففي تعلق كبير عندهم بالأهداف وفي عندهم ما في نظرة شمولية لأن الحياة هي عبارة عن كذا حاجة مع بعض أحلى ناس الناس اللي في المربع اللي فوق على اليمين هذولا اللي وانا ضربت مثال بريتشارد برانسون حقت فيرجن فيجن يخترع يغير في العالم في نفس الوقت هو مستمتع كنا بنشوف صوره مع اولاده وزوجته والان بنشوف صوره مع احفاده فعايش الحياه بكل معناها يتمتع بكل الصحه والعافيه وانا دائما اقول اذا انت كنت سعيد ومستمتع بكامل الصحه والعافيه ياتيك رزقك من كل مكان اعلم انك تطبق الدين كما أمرنا به الله سبحانه وتعالى ربنا يبغانا نكون سعيدين نكون منتجين نحقق مبدأ الخلافة في الأرض إذا ما في أهداف ما في خلافة وإذا ما في استمتاع إحنا بنحقق نحاول نحقق أهدافنا ما في خلافة في الأرض آخر شريحة في في عرض اليوم هي عن كيف نحط الأهداف وتكلم عنها بروفيسور جوناثان بس أنا أحطها بطريقة شوية مختلفة آه وهذه برضو تعلمتها من فيشن آه آه لكياني في, الـ في الـ الكورس اللي اسمه بينج اكسترا اوردينري تبغى تكون عندك اهداف شموليه لازم تفكر في ثلاثه انواع من الاهداف تبغى تحطها على كل ربع سنه تبغى تحطها كل شهر تبغى تحطها كل سنه الفريكونسي حقتها وتكرارها انت تقرر ايش بس لازم تكون ثلاثه انواع عشان تحقق السعاده أول نوع من الأهداف أهداف التجارب خلونا نبعد عن المقتنيات يعني أبغى يكون عندي بيت أبغى يكون عندي سيارة أبغى أشتري الشنطة الفلانية أبغى لا خلوا الأهداف يكون فيها تجربة أبغى أطلع رحلة هايكينج أبغى أروح أجرب كروز أبغى خلوا فيه أشياء فيها تجارب جديدة أبغى أسوق سيارة مثلا لمبرجيني أروح أستأجرها وأسوق مثلا كل ما زدت أهداف التجارب كل ما أعطيته معنى ومتعة للحياة وبروفيسور جوناثان قال إنه حتى بمجرد ما تنزل تجري أو تمشي 
ستريس يخرج من من جسمك وترتفع عندك هرمونات السعاده وتبدا تحس بانه انت مبسوط ومستمتع، فاهداف التجارب مره مهمه، دائما لازم يكون عندنا اهداف للتجارب حاطينها لنفسنا. اهداف تطور ابغى اتعلم لغه جديده، ابغى اقرا كتاب، ابغى احضر كورس، ابغى ابغى اسوي طريقه جديده في عمل مثلا البروجكت مانجمنت، وات ايفر. لازم كل ما يكون عندك يكون عندك اهداف تطور فيها نفسك بحيث انه لما تنتهي المرحله هذه حق الاهداف انت تكون احسن من الشخص اللي بدا هذه المرحله. مهم جدا اهداف العطاء. اهداف العطاء يعني حتى دكتور جوناثان تكلم عليها آه لازم يكون عندنا من ضمن اهدافنا ابغى اتطوع ابغى اتصدق آه ابغى اساعد أخصص ساعة من في الأسبوع ساعتين في الأسبوع أقضي وقت مثلا مع الأهل أقضي وقت مثلا مع أحد من من الأقارب أدخل عليه السعادة أزور مريض أي حاجة فيها عطاء فيها معنى وذكر بروفيسور جوناثان كذا وكذا يعني أدخل مثلا ممكن أشتري غدا للطاولة اللي جنبي في مطعم بس مجرد أن حطيت نية أنه أنا أبغى أي وونت تو جيف والحقيقة العطاء من احلى الاشياء اللي ممكن تحسسنا بالسعاده بس مجرد ما تفكر انه انت بتسوي شيء فيه عطاء السعاده عندك والهرمونات ترتفع عندك على طول فالعطاء كثير كثير مرتبط بالسعاده حختم بخبر جميل قراته امس السعوديه تتقدم في تصنيف السعاده المعتمد على المعتمد على جوده الحياه حسب تقدير الامم المتحده نشر مؤخرا هذا التقرير نشر اعتقد في الويكند السعوديه يعني تقدمت من 26 ل 21 المؤشر هذا يقيس جودة الحياة وحقيقة أنا قدر أحط الرابط في الشات إذا تحبوا تطلعوا على التقرير بشكل مفصل فإحنا الحمد لله ربي أنعم علينا بأشياء كثير ممكنات للسعادة نعيش في دولة تعيش مرحلة من الانتقال ومرحلة من التحول ودائما بقول الجيل الجديد أنتوا محظوظين جدا أن جيتوا في هذه المرحلة في فرص كثير في ممكنات كثير فنحمد الله ونشكره على هذه النعمة وإذا في شيء حيزيد السعادة ويزيد هو شعور الامتنان فكل ما فكرنا في النعمة الصغيرة من ضمن التمارين اللي أنا دائما أسويها وأنصح أي أحد يسويها أصحى ما تصحى الصباح خذ ورقة قلم وأكتب عشر أشياء أنت ممتن لها عشر أشياء ممكن يكون من ضمنها المخدة إن أنت كنت نايم عليها ممكن يكون البيجامة اللي أنت لابسها ممكن يكون الجوال لما يرن ويصحيك على على وقت الصحيان يعني كل ما كنا ممتنين الأشياء الصغيرة كل ما زادت السعادة عندنا وربنا قال ولا إن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ما قال ولا إن شكرتموني لأزيدنكم قال ولا إن شكرتم الشكر يكون لكل حاجة شكر حتى للجمادات شكر للأشخاص الشكر للمواقف هو الشكر إحساس حتى مو لازم تعبر عنه طبعا لما تعبر عنه في العلاقات يحسن العلاقات فشعور الامتنان يرفع السعادة ويرفع كل هرمونات السعادة في الجسم ف... ح... فكده أنا خلصت بس آه... وكنت أبغى أسوي المنتي مرة تانية بس أنتم من البداية كنتم متفقين فأتمنى لكم سعادة تدوم وسعادة تخليكم تنتقلوا للمرحلة اللي بعدها وتكونوا دائما في حالة تطور وفي حالة بهجة شكرا لكم يس شكرا لك استاذة نور ما شاء الله تبارك الله يعني كلام ما في بعده اي كلام تقريبا لخ الأشياء حتى لو تم ذكرها يعني مثلا زي ما أنت تفضلتي أن الدكتور جوناثان ذكرها أو تم ذكرها في النقاش بين البانلست بس سبحان الله أنت أظهرتيها بطريقة مفصلة أكثر وأظهرتي أن الأشياء البسيطة هذه اللي إحنا ممكن نسويها يكون وقعها أكبر وفعليا الواحد لما يكون ممتن أو يحس بحالة من الامتنان بالحاجات اللي هي عنده هيحس سبحان الله بالسعادة أكبر ممتنين لك ولوجودك معانا وشكرا شكرا للمره المليون على حضورك معانا جدا الله. جدا استفدنا من المحاضره القيمه وباذن الله الواحد الاحد زي ما انت تفضلتي لو احنا بس طبقنا عشرة او ثمانية او خمسة من اللي انت ذكرتيهم من ال15 امورنا ان شاء الله حتكون بخير وحنحس بالسعاده اللي احنا نستحقها شكرا م. لك باذن الله شكرا ثانك يو دكتور جود ثانك يو
Oh, it was a pleasure having you, Ms. Noor, with us. And I truly believe we have learned something new from your session. It was truly enlightening. And the expressions, I could just read everything uh, from what you were saying. It was very engaging. So on behalf of a Jubilation Office and Prince Sultan University, uh, I pay my gratitude to you for coming here, presenting, and taking out time from your busy schedule. Truly, truly appreciate. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Uh, moving on, I would now invite uh, Mr. Ahmed Al Gamdi for the closing remarks. He is one of my proud Jubilation Ambassadors. Uh, he would like to pay thanks uh, to everybody. Uh, Mr. Ahmed Al Gamdi, if you're here with us. Mr. Ahmed, I saw your message on the chat room. السلام عليكم واضح الصوت yes. السلام عليكم على الجميع أود أشكر الجميع بدون استثناء وكذلك إما شاركونا قصصهم عن السعادة خص بالشكر البروفيسور جنثن والدكتورة نور بالفقية على إثرائهم لنا عن فهيم السعادة وكما لا أنسى فريقنا الملهم سفراء السعادة الدكتور جولي والدكتور نجيب الدكتور نورا مس مشاعل مس سارة الحياة مرة واحدة يعني يشوها بالتزان وسعادة ونراكم ان شاء الله قريبا في ونس... يعني في مناسبات سعيده ان شاء الله باذن الله شكرا للجميع شكرا Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ahmed. And once again, I would like to thank all the presenters, especially Professor Jonathan and uh, Ms. Noor Balfaki for your time and your efforts you have taken. I would like to thank all the panelists, my lovely panelists. We had a lovely discussion. I hope we had more time. I wish, uh, but we need to adhere to timelines. All the faculties who are attending today, I hope you have learned something new and some inspirational stories have been shared. I thank all my my jubilation uh, ambassadors for being there, uh, especially Mr. Ahmed Al Gamdi for the support you have provided in preparing the video as well. I forgot to mention this uh, when we were running the video. So thank you so much, Mr. Al Ahmed Al Gamdi. And I cannot forget the admin staff of PSU and our lovely students. So thanks to each one of you. I pay my sincere gratitude to each one of you for attending, taking out time. And I wish you all a very, very happy, not international day, but a happy life ahead and a blessed life ahead. So uh, let's uh, be happy and make people around us happy. That is the message I would like to give to everybody. Uh, and that is what we draw from Professor Jonathan's speech also. That try to the, the top 30 should try to help the bottom 30. So sharing is caring is happiness, I would say. That's the formula. So thank you, each one of you. Thanks, Ms. Noura, for moderating this lovely session in Arabic. Uh, great enthusiasm you have got. I truly appreciate that. And in if any one of you have any questions, any comments, Ms. Noura, have you taken any questions in the middle uh, for Ms. Noor, if we have? No, there is no question. I feel like everyone was completely synced um, with her yes. presentation. I feel like they will just take this takeaway about what are the things that they want to implement from the 15 things that she has shared. Seriously. So true, yeah. so true, yes. So that's a good sign. So let me sign off with that. Thanking everybody for your participation. Have a blessed day and I will see you around in our next event. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out for everyone. Thank you. Virtual claps and physical claps. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.